this week on Greenfield's Finest Podcast. So another dude comes up to me at the show, and he spots me up, and I'm like, what's going on, man? He goes, man, you might not know me. I'm the black dude from Alex Whipple. You know what I mean? I'm holding, yeah. a, yeah. holding a baby. It's Saturday night. I got nothing yeah, to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so you're top three. Dude, you just can't judge quarterbacks. I don't even know why we ask you anymore. <laughs> it, it's just... Yeah, Joey B's talking. Right. right. Maybe you start staring uh, at it, It's starting to look. It's starting to look like he's a system quarterback. Dude. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greenfield's Finest Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Z. Bird Zidell. With me, as always, the boys are in the building. We got my main, main man, Angry John Rosado. What up, John? What's up? And then we got my main, main man, my co-host, Big Moneyline Welsh. What up, Moneyline? What's going on? And then we got Not Surely again. <laughs> I his kids I get it. His kids are at a Christmas show. I understand a Christmas I, spectacular. Yeah, I don't I don't have kids, but I respect the fact that he does and he goes to their events because my dad didn't come to many of mine. So we understand, Anthony. I mean, there's going to be like ten of those Christmas spectaculars. Yeah, I will figure. He got twins. Well, they're in the same same grade. grade. So, yeah, so he knocks out two at one. <laughs> he knocks out. Yeah. It ain't like you got to go to four of them a year. No. Tuesday night scheduled, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rosado got he got like he got to go to three different Christmas spectaculars. Nah, a year. they do them all at the same time. And it's usually on a Friday. They break night. up the grades. Yeah, they do it by grade. I'd rather do it on a Tuesday than a Friday. I'll tell you that. Yeah. At least well, maybe getting time to do anything on like a, a weekday sucks. Do, now, like for <laughs> for the girls, do they get the younger grades out of the way first so you can bounce? <laughs> this year, the kindergarten's like the stars of the – like, they put on the play. Yeah, okay. they're funny. They're funny. They put on, like, the actual play. The other grades pretty much just go up and sing, like, two or three Christmas carols. That's it. What kind of play? The, you know, the birth of Jesus, mm-hmm. all that whole nine yards? Yeah, that old – That old – That old – that, that, <laughs> that, that old – They're still running that <laughs> yeah, old that, stick. That old yarn. Yeah. Uh, do they still do the Stations of the Cross? Obviously not for Christmas, but, like, Easter. I, I'm sure they do. I'm saying, do you really have you have the gone? No, to I haven't like, been there in a while, Jack. No, I'm not a good Catholic. <laughs> well, no, dude. I'm saying, if you're a kid, so we used yeah, to. Yeah, my kids do. Oh, so they have to, like it's like a play. Like we used to have to like do a play yeah, with like that. stations of the cross. That's no, what they I'm don't asking. do. They don't do a play. No we play. Had to act okay. It up. We had to act yeah. it out. I remember. Yeah, that. we that was and it was like gritty, dude. Who was Jesus in your grade? Rob Kelly. Okay. Yeah, yeah he, he killed it. I think he did it seventh and eighth. I could be making that up, but I'm pretty sure he did seventh and eighth grade. And he knocked it out of the park. He's a good Jesus. I mean, he was he a great fit, Jesus. He fits the. He's thin. Got the thin build. Yeah, he was. He was a great Jesus. I think I was a soldier one year. And then <laughs> a, yeah, except yeah, and then I think I got bumped up to something else the next. But I honestly can't remember. Jesus was like, that was it. That we would have to like, like fake nail him to the cross, and we would hit this like block underneath, like and like bam, 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 and he would squirt flake, fake blood on him and shit like that. Really, dude, it was crazy. He would carry the cross down the yeah. uh, down the what the fuck the aisle it? the aisle yeah uh, stop at each like station and they would do it. It was uh, it was a lot. I could see why they stopped that. <laughs> looking back on it, very ritualistic. Yeah, yeah, it was it was yeah, and That's heavy. little little kids. Yeah. Uh, Real little kids. And we had to, like, practice it a lot, so we were, like, really banging out. But it was nice because it got you out of class. So, like, I always volunteered for, like, shit like that. Yeah. Anything to get me out of any class. But, uh, yeah, no, Rob, Rob uh, he was a star. He killed that for sure. Do you, you, you do stations? Yeah, I, I don't remember what part I played. I think I was, like, off to the side. I was, like, a... You were a bad kid. Yeah, they didn't, like, after I, the shit I pulled in the fucking the Christmas Disney spe- The Disney <laughs> Spectacular. They weren't giving me any, like, love at all. Like, I was, like, I might have been, like, a backup soldier. So I was mm. telling somebody about the Disney Spectacular, like, last week. And, like, as I'm telling it, I'm just, like, telling the story. And, like, they're looking at me, like, horrified. <laughs> they're, like, what do you mean? You, wh- you did what to your teacher? You changed the words and called him gay, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, kids." Yeah. And, and, and he's like, "He had a mental breakdown. Like he didn't come back to school for weeks." I was like, "Like months." Maybe he still didn't come back. Yeah, and they were like, "Dude, that's insane." How old were you guys? I was like, "I mean, I was in, I was only in seventh. Those dudes were in eighth. You know, and they were like, "Dude, that's like a that's a lot. That's man. a sin." <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, looking back on it, and they're like, well, you should have known better then. I was it's like, still yeah. funny. <laughs> my, mom, my mom was pissed. <laughs> that uh, was your mom. Your, oh, no, 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 no. My mom, I'm saying my mom was pissed at the time. Oh, my mom yeah. was furious after the Disney Spectacular. 
she came and fucking gripped me up. She was like, I literally left work for this shit, you little assholes. And then, like, that was it and, like, went to work, back to work. But I, I could see that, you know, you leave work thinking to see your kid in some type of play, sing, and they change the words around and, you know, slander a teacher. Yeah, and make him go lose his mind and he yeah. didn't come back to work ever again. And I, he looked different when he came back. He didn't look the same. He wasn't he had the same. curly hair he when was he men- left. He, he was had straight hair when he yeah, came he back. Was straight mentally, white hair. He was <laughs> mentally broke. That's a shame. It was, yeah, well, you know, don't get in the business then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Teach, teach. Show business ain't easy. Yeah, don't try to teach music to kids in Greenfield who don't give a fuck. Yeah, don't make a bunch <laughs> of Greenfield kids that just started, like, dabbling and drinking uh, <laughs> to a Disney Spectacular. And then put the biggest idiots, give them the biggest roles. Who, who so, are you telling the story to that was looking at you sideways? Uh, this was one dude and, like, his his friend. But uh, and he was like, whoa. That that was his question. He said, like, "Why in the world would they trust you to do that?" I was like, "Well, we duped them and we practiced and we took it serious for like months." <laughs> All to, he was like to sabotage him at the end. I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "So there was a conspiracy." I was like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "Dude, it was very premeditated. It's very, 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 very evil when you say it out loud." Yeah, when you break it down in like small. Like bullet points, yeah. It's uh, who was the mastermind? Man, I don't. If I'm not, I don't, I, I don't know, know if I could point the fingers at like one that. person. <laughs> Somebody like ran it by, and everyone was like, "Yep, let's take him down." Because no one wanted to do a Disney spectacular. You know what I mean? Like that's insane. We were it, old, I, old in our minds to be singing show tunes. I remember <laughs> when it started, and then like dudes were like, "Fuck this!" Literally, like in the seventh, eighth grade, "Fuck this!" And then minds started coming together. Like, Dude, what we should do is pretend to do this, and then when the day we go into the church, we'll just go totally insane, make up our own, and was like, yeah, piece you're right. Piece. That's exactly what happened. Because I remember like the first like couple like practices, dudes wouldn't like wouldn't sing like, hum, 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 hum. and then there was a meeting in the minds. The eighth graders like, hey, <laughs> take this shit seriously. We're gonna fucking bang it out. So we were like into it, like, blah, 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 like was, learning the steps and shit. Was there anybody who was like not didn't want to go along? Everybody fell. Everybody that needed to fall in line fell in line. The nerds that like didn't really, that we really it was like eight men out, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, we yeah. we had enough guys right, to right. fucking steal the series. Yeah, and like we kind of didn't let the nerds, they weren't privy to that information because they would have ratted us out. It, well, I even think some the dudes in our grade, I wouldn't even call them nerds. They were just been like dudes that were a little bit different. I think they were on board with it. They just were. Did not want to perform the insane. They wouldn't have done that in front of their parents. No. Right. No. Yeah, that was, yeah, same reason, there wasn't really any nerds. There was just like, because I'm friends. Different. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, like, people consider nerds back in like a kid who was smart. Meanwhile, like, exactly. now, <laughs> now you, you like run into the dude and you're like, oh, they're cool as fuck. But like yeah. back in, you just, dude, we, we knew, dude knew how to do long division. So he, he got made fun of for <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. He knows fractions. He's a real fucking giant piece of shit. Yeah. But there was, you know, there was a couple kids you couldn't trust that were like, look, look to ruin something like that. So they weren't privy oh, to the information. Oh yeah, you know, a couple of teachers' pets. You know, every every grade had a couple. Of uh, I know, I can think of one right now. I'm not gonna say their name, but they got plucked in the ear with a paper clip one year. But yeah, but some of those dudes <laughs> that were a little different, like nerdy, like they were more evil than anybody. Yeah. So yeah, most of mostly everybody was on board. The girls, I think they kind of felt away about it, but like you know, there was boy girl parts, so like they didn't have to do it on their parts. So we could just. We could, we could steal the show, and flip the series, and we did. Yeah, uh, would you, I know you, this weekend I had a comedy show on 12. 12 uh, Whiskey Barbecue. 12 Whiskey Barbecue. We had a good time. It was a nice turnout. It was pretty crowded, that's for sure. Uh, people, lo- I mean, doing shows in, in bars is, is just, it's hard work. Brutal. Yeah, like, I'll say this. They were, it was as good behaved of an audience as I could have thought it was going to be. When I first got there, I was like, I didn't had no idea what was going to go, and it was. What time did you go on? Eight o'clock, and by, by the time I went on, it was eight forty. Yeah. Like, it was. I get it. You're people were into the liquor by eight forty, pe- and people were not side side. They haven't seen each other in a long time. They're having fun, but like for the most part, like people were like pretty cool. It was like mostly people that I didn't. Some know. comedians were drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't make it tonight. <laughs> Did, oh man! But the old doctor. Everybody Scholes, was drinking. Did Doctor Scholes have a couple? Oh, he had a few. He had a few, and he got off stage, and like, <laughs> I just, I like, he just looked like I don't know. He looked he, defeated. Was yeah. it Friday or Saturday? It night? was Friday. Friday night. So I seen him Friday during the day, and I was like, "You gonna have a couple before you get down there?" He's like, "Oh," because they was him and his dad looked at each other around like two, two thirty, like. 
pack it in Friday. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, you know, have a couple before you get on there. Ah, I'm like, you know, you know, get get the nerves. And I was like, he so, working hard all so, day. So he called me at seven o'clock. He was like, hey, dude, I think I need a ride down here. I was like, oh, I've already been down here for a half hour. I was like, I he was, was, uh, he was. I was like, dude, if you would have called me at five, I'd have, uh, I, I would have waited. I would have literally waited and got you at like six forty-five. But he never called me till seven, so I was like, whatever. But I got a funny story about another comedy show I did on Saturday. So the Saturday, buddy of mine, Ty Mac, had a comedy show at this spot, nineteen North. Actually, really well put together comedy show. It was funny. Crowd was great. One lady like got out of line. It was like one of the first times I ever put someone in their place. And, like, I put this lady in her place because she was the only one yelling out shit and she wasn't even being funny. She was this, like, a was this a club, like, was or was it, like, more like... A stage. This was, was more of a stage with 250 chairs. chairs. That's a lot of people. Right, and they're there enjoying the show. So and they she, knew they were com- coming to a comedy show. 100%. And she was yelling out shit, like... <laughs> like, moaning like that? Like, yeah. So saying, I'm like, listen, lady, I was like, I'm not... I was like, I'm going to tell you right now. It's my responsibility while I'm on this stage to make sure I was a good time. I don't know when the fucking last time any of these people have been out is. So, like, right now, I'm taking it as my personal responsibility to make sure everyone has a good time. So, we don't fucking need you to make groaning noises and act like an idiot. Yeah. I get it. I was like, dude. There, you get a little the, standing ovation? The crowd was half white, half black. Let me tell you what. I won the black folks over right there. Yeah. They were like, yeah, fuck that bitch. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah. So, like, you know, I had... I had Who was the disturber, a white girl, black girl? A, 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 a 40-year-old white lady. It was a buffoon. Yeah. So, I had prior... Fat. To, yeah. So, let me, get, let me get to this part. So, prior to that, I was telling a joke about this lady that used to suck homeless dudes' dicks behind a dumpster. So, then I said to her, I was like, how would you like it if I went down to your fucking job and just start making noises? Like, ooh. And she was like, yeah. I was like, she probably don't even have a job. She's too busy sucking dick behind the dumpsters. <laughs> and that's when everyone turned on her, like, dumpster whore. And they just fucking, dude, she scurried they out. They throw shit at her? No, they didn't throw it at her. But, <laughs> but she scurried out of there, like, you know what I mean? Like, she, like, grabbed her coat and scurried out of there, and her family was, like, embarrassed. So then. Uh, so she, was, she wasn't, like, she was with a crew. She, she wasn't solo. She was at a table of eight who was humiliated. So after that, the show continues to do great. Next guy gets up, he's doing all right. But the headliner is getting ready to come on, Ty Mack. He's pretty, he's hilarious. So Ty get, goes on. During the time from when I went on to Ty went on, this, like, guy, the host guy got up there. It was, like, he was trying to do some different stuff, and kind of these dudes in this balcony were getting rowdy. Well, I had all my shit up in this balcony, so I went up there, and I'm talking to these dudes. They look like they were literally all extras from the 3-6 Mafia video. Like, they all had grills. They were all jacked up, chains. They were just, like, looking mean, sipping lean. And I was just like, I don't want no problems with you dudes. So they were like, yo, man, that was funny as hell talking about fingering that old hoe. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) yeah, ain't ain't nothing funnier than fingering an old hoe. I was like, all right, fellas. I was like, God, serious, thanks for keeping an eye on my stuff. Go downstairs. My buddy Ty Mac gets up there. These dudes will not quit getting rowdy. So it's like a half hour into his set. He's doing really good, but like these dudes will continually start I have an outburst. So the dude's wife comes up to me and she was like, Can you please go up there and say something to them, dude? It seems the, like the comedian's wife. Yeah. Oh. The, it was like it seems like you kinda know like have a rapport. There was I wasn't gonna make her go up there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, All right. So I'm like looking and she was like, Could you just tell him to shut up? And as she said that, the balcony's right above and these dudes clearly heard her say that. So, like, the dude's looking at me as I walk up the steps, waiting for me to tell them to shut up. So, I'm like, what am I going to do? And I got up there uh, to the balcony, and I just, like, looked at the dude, and the dude was like, what's up? And I was like, man, I, I just wanted to tell you, it, it was really nice to meet you guys. <laughs> My name is Mike Zidell. Take care, man. Hope to see you around sometime. And I just fucking left. Dude. You, like, left the... <laughs> left the whole fucking facility. I already got paid. I was like, I'm out of here. Yeah, that ain't your job. No, I was like, where's the security? Yeah, threw you off the balcony. Right, and he, but the dude, <laughs> the dude, the funniest was the dude asked me, like, he was like, man, how do I get a hold of you? I was, he said, how do I find out what's going on with you? I was like, dude, my name's Mike Zidell, what's on Facebook? And he's like, you use your government? And I'm like, yeah, I use my government. <laughs> and he was like, all right, man, I'm going to come check you out. But Were they there for when you snapped on the- Yes. So they should have known. They, they love, but uh, it was, a, there was a weird situation. Like, the one dude got up there and started telling jokes again. Like the host, dude, and I think during that time, people thought it was going to be like an intermission, and it wasn't. No, they, they were looking for a break. He yeah, lost them. He kind of lost them. Not really his fault. It just was like they were looking yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So another dude comes up to me at the show, and he splows me up, and I'm like, what's going on, man? He goes, man, you might not know me. I'm the black dude from Aliquippa. And then he was a white dude, and I'm like, wait a minute. 
you're that dude, and he sounded just like him. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude, I got to get a picture with you. So the black dude from Aliquippa is actually a white dude from Bridgevale. He yeah, moved here recently, and apparently he has connections to Avalotis from years ago from painting bridges and I shit. I made that up. I wanted you to be like, you used to work with Jack. So he didn't? No, no, no. That was, that was, that was a lie. Do you know that he painted bridges? No, <laughs> I just, yeah. My, my Did he really work for Avalotis? I have no idea. I he made said it he up. used to paint bridges. No, so he didn't work for Avalotis. He didn't know what the fuck who Jack was, but I showed him a picture of Jack. Did you, uh, did you, did you so you did all that? Yeah. So Z Bird sends me a picture like, hey, this is uh, Mike from Aliquippa. I'm like, hey, I know that guy. I used to, work, I used to uh, be in the painter's room with, with him. <laughs> and <laughs> he's hoping Z Bird. Completely made up, you know what I mean? I'm holding, yeah, a, yeah, holding right. a baby. It's Saturday night. I got nothing yeah, to do. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, well, again, so I'm hoping like Z Bird goes up to me. Hey, you like you used to work with Jack? Blah blah. blah. So you're saying you did that? I did. I did ev- every step of that to where I showed him, and he said he didn't remember you. And I'm like, it was like 15 years ago. He said you were there, and the dude was like, well, I did paint bridges. I'm like, that's how you knew each other. And then, like, when you told me he was really cool with Yogi, I pulled up the picture. Did you send it to Yogi? With, no. You're sitting there Fuck. pulling up pictures. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Facebook. I mean, so I was about to be like, dude, you should send that pic to Yogi. Yogi, real, that was they were boys. That, so then Yo, you would be like, dude, who the fuck is this guy? But I didn't want to tip my cap too much. I find out I mean? Sunday it was because we were doing, you know, Sunday morning gambling, and I sent Yogi the picture. He goes, I don't remember dude at all. <laughs> so I'm like, man. So it worked. It went yeah. all the way. That's I great. was like, man, you smoke way too much weed. But <laughs> the dude, uh, Al Quippa, I don't know if he called in this week or not, uh, but he's fucking cool as fuck. I mean, he was like, he wanted everyone to know that he, you know, I mean, he's like, man, you can let Rosal know he's off the hook. He was like, you know, just r- dude likes fires. And I'm like, all right, my man. Oh, fuck, that's funny. So, I love when a good joke goes the whole way. Yeah, uh, real quick, everybody, I do want to mention, coming up this Saturday, this, uh, December 16th, I'm going to be down at Stage AE uh, for the Matt Light Ugly Christmas Sweater Party. It's going to be cracking. There's a uh, few tickets left. I don't know how many as of today because I know every day it keeps it dwindling and dwindling. I know Eagle Tits bought tickets today. Larry, uh, was there a lot of seats left or like? Not a lot. Yeah, I looked. I, I okay. looked on Saturday night. Are you night. going, Jack? No. Yeah, like maybe four seats Are you? Yeah. Seats yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. I'm not sure, but I did look. At, I was looking at seats, and like they they are like yeah, they're dwindling. So yeah, if you guys wanted to, wanted to come, I would grab your tickets uh, sooner than later. Uh, if you can come to it, I get it. It's the holidays, everything like that. Uh, but if you are able to come, this is a great show to come to. It's going to be a freaking blast. Billy Crawford's going to be there. Ray Zawadney, myself, Matt Light. It's going to be a really good night. How many people is the stage? Uh, it holds, I think, 1,100. They, they, there's like up to up to 1,200, but this has 1,100. The 1,200 is like they have to do something weird. Yeah, 1,100 is enough tickets. Yeah, they, you, know, you start getting more than that. You, you know. what, uh, are, you, are you nervous? This is a big show. I would say I'm more excited right now. Leaning up to it, I like enjoying the lead up. Come Friday, I'll be a nervous wreck. Yeah, I would imagine so. So this is like, uh, it's like one of those things. Like you'll, pro- I'll probably look back on. There's a, a, a pretty good chance this will be the biggest thing I ever do. So it's like I want to enjoy it, but I definitely know when my nerves will be. And come Saturday, I'll be a fucking ball of nerves. But once I get up there, hopefully it goes good. And you open it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not the host, but I'm the first comedian. First guy up. So, which is it's great. Set the tone. Yeah, like I'm, g- I'm glad. You get I'm it over g- with, and you get to like. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good spot. You get and you get a fresh crowd. Right. You know what Excited I mean. Excited to be there. Yeah, like people are like, yeah, they're pumped, and like the dude, like I did, I was, I would have hosted anyway. Like they'd be like, hey, we need you to host, but there's the other guy's hosting who's like, uh, the dude that has something to do with the pirates. He actually is pretty funny. He's going to come up. So it's going to be a good time, man. It's going to be a lot of shit going on there that night. It's going to be a good night out. So get your ugly sweater and come on down. Steelers, man. <laughs> I, I don't even, like, remember the game. It was so ass at this point. It's Thursday night. Thursday night. I mean, I shut it down about the third quarter. Yeah. I had shit to do. To, you know, I had to work the next day. So I went to sleep. Trubisky, I mean, I, I, I was up enough to text you. That was the worst. That yeah, was that, one of the that was one of the worst throws I ever I've seen. ever seen. Yeah, and then he followed it up on the next drive with like a top five worst throw I ever seen. He threw in the triple coverage and the wide receiver wasn't looking. <laughs> like, dude, like, what are you I doing? Think, he just I, don't care. I, I knew think. Mitch was bad. I didn't think he was this bad. There's a gunslinger mentality. Then there's just like, yeah, you, you got to see three blue jerseys there, right? How can't you? <laughs> you know How can't I mean? you? It's just 
Mitch might be on his way of like playing too much where he's going to play himself out of the league. Right. There's a lot of guys that could kind of cruise, contract's up after this cruise year, right? through the NFL. Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, two years, $10 million a year. Which is Should insane. He, I mean, so he's starting on Sunday. I get it. Like, dude, like, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. With Race and Rudolph. Right. I feel like, At least, like, a change of energy or some change shit. Change of energy. Like, dude, yeah. I've, the one pick that got called back – it was, was horrible, too. Horrible. That was early. Like, dude, you could have, like, three picks in the first half. I, I, I've been saying this for about five weeks in a row, but, like, now it's to, the like, way more of a boiling point. I don't know how the defense isn't fighting the offense every week. Dude, I don't – there's a lot of shit coming out of the locker room. There's, like, dudes aren't preparing People right. People are hating pickings. Dudes d- – dude, well, yeah. you know what? If he's, if he's that bad – well, you know what, dude? When you got Tommy DeVito – Throwing better than every fucking quarterback we've had on our staff this year. Right. It has to go to. Co- I mean, it's it has frustrating to co- for wide receivers. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a game plan. It's coaching because like Tommy DeVito's Tommy DeVito. It's, it's a great story, but like he's going to be out of the league in two years. Right. Look so, at Browning. 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 Look at Joe Flacco. Well, I think Brown. I I think Joe Burrow might be a system quarterback. Stop it. I think Stop Joe. It. Stop it Joe right now. Bull he went to the Super Bowl. Might be a system court. Dude, Brownie is He went to it LSU up. and won a, a national championship. Joe, Joe Cole is, 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 top, so you, so is you're, top three. <laughs> Dude, you just can't judge quarterbacks. I don't even know why we ask you anymore. <laughs> it, it's just it, – Joey B's top three quarterbacks. Right. Maybe start staring uh, at it, Lyman. It's starting, to look, it's starting to look like he's a system quarterback. Dude, Brian, uh, so back to this Browning. He, when he played for Washington, he was a gunslinger. And I'll give him this. Like, he's throwing some nice balls. There's not a ton of tape out on him. So, like, he's getting away with some stuff now that he probably won't get away with in a couple weeks. I think he's playing his ass off. Good for them. Dude. Yeah, but there, he, there's no way he's as good Steeler, as Joe Burrow. Do you think the Steelers are worse now without Canada? I'm confused no, by the I mean, whole thing. It was that, so, that is a topic. It, but Canada had to go. We could all, two We could all agree Canada had to go. I, Dude, I, they're still they're – still, like uh, I'm not saying on fourth and ones they're still lining up in shotgun and doing that draw. It's that's a, been like I'm not saying it's that better. That should get you fired. I, I'm saying, I'm saying the Faulkner and the other dude, there whoever, you go. it's it's all bad. Those yeah. dudes were in there for those meetings. They were all part of the all part of it. They all need to go, dude. Dude, they all need to go. I agree. Tomlin's fucking press conference. I just heard snippets of it. It was the same usual shit. He's fucking not blaming anybody. Like it's just he. I, I said this last week. It's Andy Reid and the Eagles, dude. Time is up for Mike Tom. It might be up. He he's got to start next year, and I think yeah, they're not going to fire offensively. Him. Not him. He needs to bring in some some fucking big dick offensive coordinator. Big yeah. dick. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't mind a new D coordinator too. Yeah. So like that's what we we had. Uh, what's his name? Brian Flores. Brian, we had Brian Flores here. Well, how do you let that dude walk out of the building and keep Austin? How do you let did, him walk did, out? Did, of the did they drink together or something? I, I I have no idea, but that was just a topic they were talking about on the radio. Like you got rid of Flores, Flores goes to Minnesota, and then you keep Austin. And like we have the highest paid defense in the NFL. And let's be honest, they kind of look like shit. The, I know how Tomlin used to move back in the day, like way back in the day, like be out and shit like that. Tomlin drinks. Yeah. And he drinks with his coaches. And they're boys and they keep it fucking tight. Right. Coach Randy, like that's how those dudes, they were out, and they were out a lot back in the day. I'm not out as much. Tomlin's older than me. Right. So he, but like, dude, I. Is he down so, burns? So you. So you <laughs> I see. I, I don't know either. I'm even not out. even like when he was out, he wasn't out. He was always like in a cut somewhere, but yeah. he was out, but he was always with co- coaches. Right. And like, and they kept it tight. And it's been that way for fucking 20 some years. I'm probably talking about. 15 17 years 17 ago. Six, years. Yeah. It seems like At you don't point, have a coach worth his shit on the offensive side of the ball. No, it may be even like the defense. I, I, yeah. Like, I think you got I mean, honestly, you almost have to, like, rebuild the whole system. You have to re- You have to get rid of all the they're, offense. They're not, yeah, they're the not defense. making anybody any better. No. They actually seem like they're getting worse. People seem confused. And and it, this and also it, goes back to me, like, does Tomlin have the power to, like, clean house? I don't know if he does, I dude. think he got it. I bet it, you he does. Rooney, said, Rooney went on record saying, you need to be getting better as the season goes on, not worse. And we're getting progressively worse every fucking week. This was, like, a bad team that looked like they were going to make the playoffs. I think they're going to miss. Yes. They're going to miss. They're going to miss. We got lucky because a couple key teams lost The this AFC's week. insane. The, it is. The, you, the Texans lost and someone else lost. Colts lost. Could you yeah. imagine if we made it and Buffalo didn't? 
No. Buffalo yeah. scary. Buffalo gets in there, they can they, fuck they, some yeah. shit up. They just have like a rough, weird season. Yep. Uh yeah, I don't know, man. The shit's so hard to watch. You get like get excited to watch a game and you're like, oh, that's what man. I'm saying. But there's it's like horrible these other young quarterbacks that are thrown for touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. It's, dude, it's not easy to find a franchise quarterback. We were spoiled with Ben well, yeah. for fucking ever. We didn't have to worry about a quarterback. That is a huge relief off a team. That being said, Ben's gone. We're, there's gonna be like trial and error with different guys. It might take. It just years. sucks. We might suck it for could. a while. Think how bad the Steelers were when we were kids. Back in the Mark 80s. Malone. Mark Malone, Bobby, Bobby Brister. Brister. Like, shit was neat. Like, neat. when we got Neil O'Donnell, we were like, Cordell, we were like, these dudes are great yeah. compared to what we were dealing with. When we got Tommy like, Gunn. Yeah, Tommy was Gunn, Gunn took over for Cordell. Yes. And then Ben got in there. Tom, was, Tommy Gunn got hurt against the Ravens, and that's what started Ben's whole career. Right. So, I mean, we, yeah, it's, it could be rough here for a long time. They've just if, been blowing picks. Kenny Pickett. Number one. Tomlin's, I don't know if it's a loyal guy. It's a comfortability thing. I just don't see him cleaning house and bringing in guys that could potentially be smarter than him. I just, I don't see it. That That is a big, like, discussion that a lot of people have that say he doesn't want to bring in upper echelons people to give up any control. Right. And, and like, that, dude, I'm not with them. But, like, if you look at what's going on, it, it looks like it could be true. I hate to say it I love Tomlin. You're an older coach. Why not? Now it's just, like, go in survival mode, load, hire some people, and, like, keep your career going. But right. Like, Live off that's their, what you want to do. Live off their But like laurels. you said last week, fuck. Yeah, right. No, And you're still going to get all the glory. That's, yeah. You're still, it will get you to the Hall of Fame. Right. All you have to do is be a head guy. If head you, guy. Team manager. Yeah. If you look, I think one of the best examples of a coach turning it around, I'm not just saying it because he's from Greenfield. No, yeah, Greenfield Mike's Greenfield had Mike, an unbelievable season. That's what I was about to say, Gre- too. Greenfield Mike stepped back, got back into the coach's room, learned to do some new things, and, like, upgraded his game and, like, got down with what was going on that was new, stepped up, brought in really good people with him. And, I mean, like, look, people were like, we, we're judging him for getting rid of Kellen Moore, and now they have the number one offense in in all right. of NFL. And he tried to bring, like, some of that old regime with him, like the f- year one, year two. It, like, I think, like, uh, like Hazlitt was still around and yeah. shit like that. And, like, it wasn't working. And he fucking cut him. And now, like, fucking right. da- – now Dak's going to be the MVP. Dude, he should be the MVP. Good, good you just see him. some of these plays that these other teams run. Yeah. I mean, you're like, it's like watching a different game. It's like beautiful. Yeah, it's watching like, a different yeah, game. Like, yeah, yeah. You just take a guy to the one side, they run the other way. I'm like, that was a beautiful two-yard run. It's funny, like you watch, because I mean, I watch like the Sunday morning NFL, and it's like it, when it goes to sit them, it's like every Steeler. <laughs> it says start them or sit them. Yeah, it's brutal. I, dude, I got Warren and uh, Najee on my fantasy squad. It is, it sucks. It sucks. Bad. I had, I had Austin as like a backup, and like, dude, I he, thought he, had, he was good. I think he had one game where he had a touchdown, and it was a long one, but that was it. He'll end up going to the Chiefs being like a number one receiver in the NFL. Yeah, they, you said last week, like, Tomlin could go into, like, radio and be a fucking star, or not radio, TV, and he be a star He could retire if you don't want to leave immediately. the city. Yeah, he lives in, he's dug in in his house. Yeah, Bill Cowher. 17 years, dude. You've Bill made Cowher. your money. Yeah. Very likable. What about, uh... Shohei, how you say it? Shohei Otani. Otani. That was, that is so, that's the biggest contract of all time, 700 million. It's all everyone's talking about, 700 million. What I have so much respect for Otani for is how backloaded the contract is. Yeah, he deterred so, almost all of it. Yeah, so he is going to not get most of the money, I think, until starting in 2034, which is going to allow this fucking team to, like, build, 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 and just dominate. And, like, they were saying, like, they're going to take over, like, especially with, like, the way L.A.'s market set up, they're going to take, like, Japan, they're going to make a killing selling jerseys over there. They're going to make so much money uh, off yeah, the Yeah, you're not just buying a player. You're buying, like, a fucking country pretty much. Right. And, like, I'm like, dude, good for Otani because I didn't want to see him get wa- his years wasted like Mike Trout did. I, uh, I heard something today on the radio. They said Otani, there's, like, when a, uh, Angels games on TV, there's a broadcast that has, like, a regular, like, American broadcast with, like, Japanese announcers. And then there's a secondary broadcast that just follows Otani around, like, the whole game. Dug out, fucking warming up in a batter's box, warming up the pitch. It's just Otani TV during the game the whole entire time. So he's, like, he's like an alien. You know what I mean? He's like a right. god over there, dude. The the breakdown of the, the, the contract, 70 
I now now this is all like we know it's fucking backloaded now, but seventy million a year, five point eight three million a month, one point five million a week, two hundred and seven K a day, eight thousand eighty six hundred and thirty dollars an hour, a hundred and forty three dollars a minute, two dollars and thirty nine cents a second. Damn. I good for him. He's my favorite player. I felt so Hopefully he comes back from this injury and he can still pitch and hit. Yeah, this is straight off Tommy John, right? Mm -hmm. And then he hurt his knee. Yeah, that's crazy. He's young, though. Yeah. He's young and he's good. Dude, he's a beast. Yeah. Pitch. I mean, if you break it down like, all right, he's he's a star pitcher. And he's a star hitter. And Combi- a great fielder. And yeah, it combine those two. Like that's what that money adds up to. Right. But that is some loot, man. Uh, yeah, I lo- I was so happy to see him go to a big market like that so he could win some World Series. Can't believe the Pirates didn't scoop him <laughs> up. It's so <laughs> weird the Pirates are even in that league. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's weird like they're even there's the major no shot. League. When there's something like that. Yeah, like how do you like we're seven hundred what's the payroll, John, for the Pirates for one year? The Pirates thirty six hundred? No, it was like <laughs> under it was like around forty two million. It was like yeah. laughable. So uh, Tawny literally almost by himself makes double what the Pirates make. The whole team, yeah. Makes. yeah, that's a whole different like league, dude. Like, you, yeah, you, he, it, they're the minors and they got to play it different, but they don't draft or develop players good either. So that's where, where we're at with them. Fucking Pittsburgh sports is in hell right it now. Is <laughs> it's just hell, like, man. Wait till, what about the old Penguins? The, the Penguins are getting old. Uh, yeah, Mark they, but they came through though. They won three Stanley Cups. They're getting old though. They're getting old. They're gonna have to have like, Joey Sid while he's here. They're gonna have to have like a good five year stint where they could draft younger players and rebuild. Because them years, they were trading away a lot of young talent yeah, to, like to win beat, cups. To win cups. Yep, but they, at least they won them. Yep, fucking right. Uh, Josh Giddy, Josh Giddy video reveals he was an underage chick at a over 21 club. So Giddy's getting jammed up pretty bad here. I, it, this story cold a lot. Uh, Josh Giddy is an uh, NBA player for the Oklahoma Thunder. There was a girl came out very young. Uh, like high school young. 16. 16. Yeah. Uh, six, 15, 16. Came out that she was dating him. Uh, they met in over. Tw- they went in a bar, a nightclub. And so Giddy obviously thought she was like old enough. How old is he? Uh, Giddy's young, 21, 22. He was 20 when he met her. Yeah. He was. Yeah. It's, well, here's the weird thing the age, the age of consent. Now, not that he's over there, but the age of consent in Australia is 16. People are like, don't matter. He's not in Australia. Right, he's in Oklahoma, where the age of consent is also 16. I think I thought when you were 20, you could date a 16-year-old. I thought the age of consent is, but if you're within four years of the age. So this, this it seems like, so they're her family and her are not, it seems like they're not moving forward with this. I don't know if there's a little side cash or like what, but uh, it, like I said, this story, story seems to be calling, this is like worst nightmare type shit. You're a young kid. You're out of the club. You get tricked by a young girl who I saw a picture. Of her. She don't look fifteen, man. No, you know what I mean. Uh, just, you can run into a girl in high school. She like, is not yeah. nineteen. Yeah, I followed her to school. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if he's the old oldest time. I, I think <laughs> he's, over twenty one club. I mean, yeah. What are you supposed to? Yeah, I mean that video. You're not checking IDs, but Jack, but Jack hit the nail on the head. It's not the girl going after her, after him. It was just like the footage got out. And it was like internet. You know, she wanted the clout. She's a young girl. She wanted the clout of like dating Josh Giddy. Couldn't really so you know, she put that out there and then everyone like looked into it, like, dude, this chick looks young, let's look into it and you know, she's a fifteen, sixteen year old girl. He's twenty one, twenty two. To me, old. for some reason at fifteen and sixteen it's a big difference. That's when you're twenty that's more in a year. I mean Dude, I'll tell you what, Addy, my girlfriend, her boyfriend when she was fifteen, her boyfriend was nineteen and her parents were like they knew about it. Yeah, I mean, listen, dude. I don't know. So, you don't know. It's just yeah. like he's uh he could get jammed up, he couldn't. Like I don't I don't know what to I mean, it seems I, like if that's how they met, he has like a way I don't know. I think it's gonna get I don't wanna say swept up. If under, he didn't intentionally like go after like if a she's a not minor. if she's not pushing this forward, I think this is gonna kinda go. It ain't like the dude from the pirates that it just got uh but a fourteen or thirteen year old. They just sent him back to Venezuela. <laughs> yeah. He was I mean, in pr- prison for a little bit, then they deported him. Yeah. That he was, was totally actively different. going after like a 13 year old, like uh, pursuing yeah, them. I kind of see. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's see how that. we lost our closer. 
Full <laughs> Forget, ice, John. Forget about the curveball, Ricky. <laughs> uh, two mega million tickets sold at the same gas station in California. Did you read this article? Yeah, in Sino, California. It was weird. Like crazy. So, like, were they... So, were they, like, the same... It, was it, wasn't, the same. For the, it wasn't for the same lottery. And so, it was different mega millions? Yes. But that's even a, a crazier thing to think. Because yeah. they wouldn't sell the same number at the same ticket. Right, yeah, 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 right, you're right. Uh, well, no, they do, right? Yeah, they can. Two they, mul- multiple m- people can win, like, a Mega Millions. Multiple people can win a Cash Five. Right. So they do. But that being said, the chances of that happening at the same gas station, two people winning, what are the fucking odds on that? I mean, that's it's absolutely insane. Now, every- It reminded me of Casino as soon as, I heard, as soon as I saw it. Right. It was like, you didn't know the fix was in? It was either you were in on it or you were too dumb to see it coming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, everyone is going to be That going, poor clerk. That, well, that dude, that store's going to be like nuts with people buying tickets. You know, yeah, if somebody's, well, they got, they better cold, cold on right now. Well, the thing about that store is, a lot, like, I didn't know this until like a while ago, but like, say a store sells a winning ticket to a jackpot, they get a very big. It's a, it's a low percentage, but like, if it's you're like selling, 50 grand. Yeah, if you're selling Mega Million with winners, it's. It adds up. It's like fifty grand, I think you get if you I, sell the jackpot. I maybe think even more. I think it's like a percent or something like that, okay. whatever you sell. But like, yeah, that that's a lot, right? Uh yeah, that's that's a wild story. I mean, Cal, that, I conspiracy theorists is like mm-hmm. they uh, it's always California because that's the biggest flood, that's the most taxes and the <laughs> government gets the most money out of it. Which like it does always true. seem California. Yeah, it's it's a big state. Yeah. You never hear about too many Idaho people winning the lottery. No, you don't. Old Idaho. You never hear about Idaho for any. I mean, Idaho better get in the game. <laughs> get something cracking here. At least, at least Josh Giddy's putting Oklahoma <laughs> on the map. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it was that one time he was telling a joke about he did a. It was pretty funny. He was like, "Yeah, there was a bunch of tornadoes. This did uh, crushed Idaho. I went up and did a benefit comedy show for them. Try to raise money. He was like, there was over seventeen dollars worth of damage. The whole town was destroyed." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, CNBC reports on how gambling is ruining men. They have no friends or girlfriends or wives, just ga- just gambling all the time. Uh, I could see this being a big problem for like high school kids and college kids right now. I mean, we could gamble when we were that age. I did gamble when we were that age. Huh? It was way harder. It was hard to do. I had to call Yogi. <laughs> Yogi had to call somebody. Yeah. Then Yogi's brother had to call something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was, it was a big to do. I had to have to my bets in on by like Wednesday. You know right, what I right. mean? Like it was, you couldn't change shit. It was all written down. Uh, but couldn't bet on we players. still you couldn't bet on players. Yeah, the parlays were you were just parlaying teams. I don't even really ma- remember betting on over unders back then. I'm sure we did, but I was gambling that young. So I mean, but like I. I, I think if it was like this in high school, like I probably got into it because it was almost like it's on your thing, phone. You're it's the thing to do. Yeah, right. Yes. Everybody's talking about it. It's almost like I mean, think about any time you're hanging you... out with your boys. Yeah, we're sitting there drinking forties. We're all going to be cooking up parlays. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dude, this one pays out seventy five grand. Could you imagine if we hit seventy five yeah. grand? It'd be nonstop. It's probably been better if it was. Yeah, better yeah, get on oxy cotton. Yeah, actually, <laughs> right? it sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. We might have Yeah, I mean, dude, we, yeah, 20, right. we had to deal with oxy with some money. We had to deal with oxy cotton. They yeah. could do a little gambling now gambling I think problem. about it. Yeah. Cut you off and you run out of money. Yeah. But but like the truth is, I think gambling now is safer than it than it was before. That's true. Because for the fact that like you can only bet what you have and I get it, you can lose all your money. But back in the day, you could lose all your money and all your fucking family's money and like some dude's going to come to your house and you got to sign over the deed to your house or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, there was dudes in crazy holes at young ages. and Like it's like 20 grand. Dude's uh, 20 years old, Don, 20 grand. Had 200 bucks to his name. <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember we had a friend call me. We were probably like 22, maybe. Maybe younger than that. Maybe 19. Uh, he was like, dude, I'm down like $8,000. <laughs> and it was like the halftime at the 1 o'clock. And I'm like, well... There's so many, so much time left, and I like. He was like, "Dude, look what's going on here." And I'm like, "Oh, you're gonna lose every one of these." And he he lost every one of them. I was like, "What are you gonna do, dude?" And he was like, "I don't know, like work out a payment plan." I'm like, "Till when? 2030?" You know what I mean? And he was like, "Called our other buddy who's a little older." He, he, I was like, "What'd he say?" He was like, "He told me to bet 
every favorite at the four o'clocks and then parlay them too. And I'm like, that seems like horrible advice. He was like, it's already in. <laughs> and fucking, he won every fucking one I, of them. That what you're talking about? about yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He won every one of them and fucking got his money back. I think he ended up winning money. So this poor bookie was about to be, be beat for like eight grand or whatever it was and ended up having to like pay this dude like like 1500 bucks or something Jeez, like that. Jesus, man. Insane. We were so young. It would be about. It was about twenty three, twenty four. Like, yeah, maybe it was a little older that. than we thought. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was soon. Bet all the bet all the four o'clocks and parlay them together. <laughs> it bet the unders. You nah, bet, it was something like it, that. It was like bet the favorite, bet the under, and it, it all hit. It was a. It was they nuts. all hit. Uh, yeah. Th- I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, gambling pussies, <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be all right. I don't know why you're not having sex. You could. So was it? it Portnoy said on uh, Twitter, he was like. He's like, when I hit a bunch of losers, he's like, I, don't, I ain't trying to fuck either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get depressed quick. Yeah. yeah. That's the last thing on your mind. Yeah. You're not trying to do anything. You're just trying to get to Tuesday, pay that bill, and get back on a clean slate. That's why I think now it's, like, safer because, like, you lose, you're like, ah, oh, whatever. And I think us dudes now bet way smarter and way lower. Way lower. I know it made me – it dropped my, like, unit size way down, dude. Because now it's just more like fun. Before, like, I was betting, like, you know, a hundred, couple hundred bucks a game, which isn't huge by any means. But now it's like 25 bucks a game. And, and I'm parlaying parlay, shit yeah. and I'm just trying to have a little fun with it. Right. And so it's, now instead of losing like $600 every Sunday, or lose like 200. At least like 100, 125 bucks. I'll, I'll take that trade off any day of the fucking week. And you're not entertained all weekend. Yeah. And I'll, you'll hit one here and there and, you know, uh, Come yeah. to work like you're the smartest dude ever. Yeah, and you show screenshot it. You show everybody. <laughs> see, I got the, pe- <laughs> Try I got to the see, pizza like, today. Like, see, John, you got to start gambling. <laughs> He's sending me free shit. Like, dude, I got you free 200 bucks. Yeah, what's your, start. what's your social security <laughs> number? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Did you, uh, so Home Alone always, this, I feel like this comes up around like every holiday. When Kevin goes shopping at Home Alone, they, were, they did a story like what it would cost now for the shit that he got. So what's that say? Nineteen ninety for all the shit. It was nineteen dollars and eighty three cents. It two thousand twenty two, forty four dollars and forty cents. Two thousand twenty three, seventy two dollars and twenty eight cents. I see an article today that each American needs an extra eleven thousand eleven thousand four hundred dollars just for like normal shit this year. That's nice, and it feels like it. I'll tell you that. It, good it, uh, good it old Bidenomics. Like, <laughs> uh, it's a. Uh, but yeah, what, what did Kevin get? Do you remember? He got a toothbrush. He I remember giving him a toothbrush, the milk because he dropped it. Yeah, I don't remember really getting anything else. That's the only two things I remember. He had a couple. I remember. Of, like, I remember he cut. Did he make a lasagna or something like that? He might have had a hot, like one of them uh, hungry man meals. He, so I, uh, oh yeah, you're right. I think he was eating some hungry man's. They were showing uh, how Kevin got left on Home Alone. It was like a TikTok or something that I seen. So when Kevin and Buzz get into it and they spill the Pepsi or milk or whatever it was all over the table, Uncle Frank goes to clean up the table and he's wiping it up and Kevin's all the tickets were lined up there. Somebody grabbed the tickets. Kevin's got spilled on. Frank didn't see it. Wipes everything up. Throws Kevin's in the garbage. So Kevin's ticket, like, well, I never, I, you never caught that. I never caught that. No, did you? You're, yeah, you're, you're I caught it. Get the I fuck out God, of God, I caught it the first time I seen it. Did you <laughs> ever catch it? day. <laughs> Every, that was the it's movie. Clear. It's not like they're hiding it from you. you I don't know. know. I feel like I never much, caught that before. They're pretty much you showing. Knew it when that happened, you were like, "Oh, he's fucked." They show them pick it up and throw it. In the, you're like, "Oh shit!" Like his ticket's gone. That's how they like realize they're not a ticket. And then the fucking annoying neighbor comes, and that's how they miss the head count. Yeah. And like, yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, I knew right. that, but I, I don't think I ever caught like them throwing a ticket away. Like his name being clear as day up there. You needed a TikTok for that, Jack. I watched <laughs> it five million times <laughs> when I was. Well, maybe you watched Home Alone a little more than me. <laughs> Uncle Frank was a motherfucker. He Uncle Frank probably did it sucker. on purpose. Yeah, he did do it He on didn't purpose. want him there. You little jerk. Uh, he didn't give a <laughs> fuck that he was gone. You filthy animal. We got any voicemails, Larry? Hey, boys. It's Alex from Monroeville. Just wanted to comment on Cunny's uh, comment last episode about cold pizza. I completely agree with him. I don't work labor, but I can always get down with cold pizza, warm, hot. I love cold pizza in the morning. I love cold pizza as a breakfast. That is my favorite breakfast. I'll also include Chinese food. I love Chinese food, and I love pizza. Cold. Warm, hot, or cold. Let me know if you guys agree on Chinese food. Thanks, guys. Oh. 
This guy's a fucking lunatic. Watch out for this guy. <laughs> oh, like uh, Chinese food already. Oh, I like Chinese food cold. <laughs> yeah, I could eat. I eat, people try to give me shit, like uh, throwing a cold piece of chicken in my mouth. I love cold chicken. Yeah, yeah cold chicken's good. Cold fried chicken might be my favorite. Cold fried chicken. A little chicken's bit of ketchup. Really good. Mm, yep. It's good, but I ate some cold. It was like chicken and broccoli Sunday morning. Yeah, you don't need to heat that shit up. No. no. You, are you, uh, you know what my move is? It is all the shit's better hot, I feel like. But my move is like throw something in a dish, microwave, leave a little cold until it's done. You know what I mean? Yeah, Johanna will like re- totally recook it. And I'll just, See, that's not. That's annoying. That's but, nuts. but that's how she likes it. But yeah. I'll, I'll, I could just eat it. Cold. I don't have patience for. Shit I like don't. That. I just want to eat it. You're looking at like. 40- I'll eat. I'll eat cold fried rice. When you say she recooks it, she's not microwaving it. She She'll put saute it. in the pan. Okay. With a little more oil, saute. I, I, it yeah. If you got the time, that is. That's my. It is way. good if you got the patience. It's the best way if to heat a pizza too. Yeah, yeah. If you want to start cleaning pans and shit before air fryers. Yeah. yeah. Now, most likely, if you're eating anything cold. Probably a little hungover. I'm avoiding the cleanup. Yeah, you're avoiding the cleanup. I'm Anything weighing, to avoid weighing, the cleanup. What's really going to happen here? GF motherfucking P. Mike New Stanton calling totally sober, which is pretty rare for me. I usually call in and don't remember nothing until the next day or the next time I listen to the podcast. <laughs> so two things. Kenny, be grateful motherfuckers even say it's happy holidays anymore. Everybody's a bunch of ignorant pricks, so fuck them. Two, you never know. If they're celebrating Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, wherever the fuck, so you're better off and you're safer with going with the old happy holidays. Because snowflakes nowadays might be offended if you say Merry Christmas and they're Jewish or whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> Three, you ever get a chance to leave a rank, nasty fart in your wife's car, forget all about it, and then an hour and a half later, your wife gets in your car, gets in her car and sends you a text message. I'm on my way to get groceries, dot, dot, dot. Did you fart in my fucking car? It was the best day of my life. Um, keep up the good work, guys. Keep this shit coming. Cracks me up every week. Try to keep this short. Eagle tits, good job. And fuck off, too. Peace out. Yeah, Mike, thanks for the, for the call. I'm glad things are going good and you're back with your wife and farting on her. I'm glad that's working out for you. Uh yeah, Kenny's not on the show every week. <laughs> We've gotten about four calls towards Kenny so far. <laughs> uh, we'll what was Kenny next- all wound up about people saying happy holidays, holidays instead of Merry Christmas? Yeah, much. I don't know. A happy holidays doesn't bother me. Especially if you grew up in Greenfield, it's Squirrel Hill's right there. Half the people are Jewish. Yeah, dude, it is weird. I said Merry, Merry Christmas to my one neighbor. They might be Jewish, but they, even if you say Merry you, Christmas, they don't give a shit. No no. If it's a normal person, they don't care. Right. right. You know what? I also don't say shit to anybody ever unless they say shit to me. You're never going to catch me and just be like, Merry Christmas. Merry. Right. He, so, yeah, like, he might have said it to me first. I'm returning whatever they say back right, to me right. 100% of the time. You're, yeah, you're not going to start that the conversation. More, the, the more you say it, the more I realize like, when I'm down Costco, post off, saying like that, I'm definitely a happy holidays guy. Like I'm like, you know, thanks. Hey, happy holiday. Hey, happy holidays. Like, I, I don't just, mind the happy holidays. Yeah, I just, it's New uh, Year's, There's too. a lot of shit going on. Right. It's New Year's. It's just Thanksgiving. It's Christmas, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah. Hanukkah just started. I know that. I'm Eight Jewish. crazy nights. <laughs> uh, I mean, farting in your wife's car when she's going grocery shopping. Jeez Louise. That is a, uh, a that's good a text long, to That's get. a long. Uh, yeah, do farts stay that long? That's what uh, I was thinking. Yes. What kind of farts he Dude, got? I'll tell you what. I had them hangover farts on Saturday. Were they, were they linger? Clearing the room up. You had to the let it Dude. linger. Dude, it was Girls just, get all wound up when you fart. They, oh, yeah. They love bad. it. Yeah. <laughs> like the, like, sometimes they don't smell that bad. They were smelling bad Saturday. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've been having, it's all about the temperature when it comes out. If it's, like, hot, you know it's well, going to be a little yeah. It's all what's in that belly. Yeah, right. I, uh. The baby's farting a lot. It's great. <laughs> Blame everything on him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no. like a just like shit all over the back of the toilet jacks. Like damn baby. Yeah, yeah baby. damn baby. <laughs> baby's wild. Babies and dogs, dude. Yep. It's not, yeah. What's up, boys? Kenny. <laughs> so you're talking about Gen X or millennials? I've heard millennials start in 1982, and I, I like to hear that better because I'm born in '81. But not to argue about semantics, but there is a thing out there called. It was on the internet, so it's got to be true. Exennials, Exennials, combination generation X and millennials. Basically, it's someone, you know, they say it's from 1977 to 1983. Anyone born within the years of the original Star Wars trilogy, you're an Exennial <laughs> because they say we were born with an analog childhood and a digital adulthood because you have traits from both. 
And any excuse not to be called a millennial, I'll fucking take it. I hate the millennials. And uh, like I said, I think it's 1982, the millennials start anyway, depending where you look. And you know, I'm going to choose to live with that one because I ain't a fucking millennial. Exennial is pretty good. Look it up. Yeah, I don't hate. It. I like our generation because he's right. We did like you know we were we were outside. We didn't have vi- video games. Did start when we were kids, so we got the you know Nintendos and all shit like that. We got all of that, but we were still outside all the time. Uh, and then we got you know grade school. We start playing some Oregon Trail. You know, got to high school, and maybe you had to type a paper, maybe you didn't. You know, so like, I don't know. It was. We got the best of it's, both worlds. Yeah, I think so. And then it was for us. I remember like this, like the way of communication. I remember how cool we thought pagers were. We were like, what "This a dumb is like thing that was." I never allowed to have one. Yeah, uh, we got. I got one through some. I don't know. Someone had someone who was getting them for everybody for twenty bucks, and I remember like I got in on that. Like you got a pager for it worked 20, for six days. Yeah, it worked for like yeah, not long. And then like you got your pager, and then like you had it for a little bit, and it got shut off because it was fucking bootleg i mean so many dudes rock shut off pagers it was crazy dude i actually bought a fake pager it didn't even work it was just it had just kept time you know what i mean and then the battery would die and i didn't even like have the time people were like what time is it like i don't know like don't you have a pager on but it doesn't work zebra i remember you bought this this uh tommy hilfiger hockey jersey you remember that jersey it was like green Mm-mm. So you bought a green like Tommy Hilfiger hockey? Are you sure, jersey. I bought it. Well, so this is what you, this is what mm-hmm. you told me. You went up to Grove City, came back, and you were like, "Dude, how sweet is your jersey?" I was like, Dude, "That's pretty sweet, like Tommy Hilfiger like hockey, like that's sweet." Yeah. And he was like, "You were like, it's two hundred. You were like, told me it was like two hundred and something bucks." And I was like, "Dude, Zebert is rich. How the <laughs> fuck is he getting that money to? Play? He's this dude's wearing two hundred and fucking some dollar hockey jerseys." Then like you know get a little. I think you like we talked about this tour, and you told me it was like eight, or like maybe I asked you like I brought it up like a couple weeks later, and you're like, dude, I paid like eighteen dollars for that, <laughs> which makes sense because it was a like, Tommy Hilfiger hockey jersey. I would have lied to. So I definitely would have lied to about people about that, like to make myself seem cool. You definitely did, and I bought it hook line sinker. I I mean I I love lying to people, and sometimes I still do it, but like yeah, yeah any way to make myself look cool. But I don't remember that, but like it, I definitely believe you. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember it. We were riding a bike. We were down McGee, and you like did a little lap around me, and you were like, "Dude, it was like two hundred some bucks." And I think I went home, told my mom, "Like, dude's out here wearing two hundred dollar hockey jerseys, and I'm fucking in British Knights." And she was like, <laughs> "Yeah, the BKs, yeah. dude." Oh man! You know, some of us didn't grow up with Squirrel Hill, John. You know what I mean? Dude, yeah. you could have went to rise this time with that British Knights. Uh, by that time, well, no, no, yeah, by that time, my my uncle like hooked me up, and I got myself in some Knights. But we're dude. talking. It, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't good. It wasn't, no, it wasn't you good. You had school uniforms. Yeah, but you had to wear. You had to wear like dress shoes. You couldn't wear tennis right, shoes. Right, but at, so it was say you went to rise inside with some pretty nice, dude. You would have been the hell. Oh, bro. Yeah, dude, bad. I hated Pickway so fucking bad. Uh, Pickway and Payless. I wore some British Knights. I actually thought they were cool, and then somebody told me they weren't. So uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you get away with buying your kid thirteen dollars shoes, you're gonna do it until you can't. The, I think the 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 most expensive shoe up until this day that I've still ever bought. Was I didn't buy it. My grandma did. Was when the Reebok Pump Shack, the the yeah. green, the Twilight Zone came to. I was like, I have to have these. My grandma did buy them for me. They were like one hundred and twenty dollars. I remember like that was like the nicest pair of shoes like I ever. You know, now it's like you go and like Air Maxes are like two hundred. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I need them. Costco's selling shoes now. <laughs> right, dude. I, I, I go. Back. I'll go to DSW all fucking day. Yeah. Go to clearance. Uh, I don't give a fuck at all anymore. At all. I got these for like sixty. They're yeah, all right. They're sick. <laughs> I got a gear grinder for you. <clears throat> so Thanksgiving weekend, we're, or a week, we're working Wednesday. I let the guys get off at like 10 o'clock in the morning, pay them for the full 10 hours, said don't post on Instagram, Facebook, Tinder, X, or whatever the fuck. What do they do? Get on there, on my way home, getting paid, blah, blah, blah. The office sees it, and I start getting phone calls. Like, how dumb are you to not get free money? Like, these guys are just a bunch of douche canoes, and I can't stand this young generation. But, boys, love the show. This is Tim from Ian the Valley. I haven't called in a while, but keep doing what you're doing. That's, incre- you. that's incredibly stupid. Yeah. Especially if they tell you, hey, don't post anything. I'll let you guys go home. Be cool about it. 
and next thing you know, you're in your car and you're getting phone calls. You can just never let them do it ever again. You just ruined it. You just ruined it. It's ruined, ruined for ru- everybody. It's ruined forever. Yeah. It, it's almost the point where, like, people don't care about what actually happens. They care about what other people see happens to them. You yeah, they want, they want that dopamine of that like, like, oh, sweet, man. I wish my job. I'm still at work. Well, now you're never getting out early ever again. Or, or they're sending you home and you ain't getting paid. What, I mean, that's just fucking stupid. Incredibly stupid. Incredibly stupid. Bunch of douche canoes. Douche canoes. What's up, boys? It's Hutch. Calling in today for a uh, little little gear grinder. Uh, I don't I don't know if it's just me, but uh, you ever go to the gym and uh, you know you notice these like like these young dudes nowadays. They uh they gotta film everything. I I don't know I don't <laughs> know why this is a thing, but nobody wants to see you bench 135 pounds on fucking TikTok. Nobody wants to see you, you look like a fucking dork. Everybody hates you. Uh, another thing too. The same dudes are rocking these dangly earrings. You know the the earrings that like George Michael made famous. <laughs> With the cross. I don't know. I had I I saw a kid do it today. Drove me nuts. Are those bad? I may or may not have bumped into uh, the camera. Like, oh my bad, cuz my my fault. Kind of kicked it a little <laughs> bit. Didn't see that there because there's a fucking tripod in the gym. I don't know why you would do that. But anyways, all right. Have a good day. Thanks, Peace. Hodge. Those earrings are sick. If I was a young I, kid right now, I'd have one of them earrings. Yeah. They're cool as fuck, and I'd have the fucking haircut, high fade, coming down here. I'd have all of it. Y- so I can't fuck. I wouldn't be in the gym filming anything because that was never my style. But, like, I, when there's a sick trend, <laughs> if cool earrings are, out, are in, I want in. Did I'd you be, have your ears pierced? I know, dude. My uncle, like, <laughs> put the fear of God in me when I was, like, a kid. He was like, no tattoos, no jewelry. And it was, like, some weird thing that, like, stuck with me forever. But that being said, looking back on it, if I could have a cool Barry Bonds, like, fucking earring, like, Dion that earring. one with the from, cross. Yeah, from, like, Claire's. It's yeah, never all too day. late. Oh, oh my, dad was, my dad was made it very clear. Yeah. You are allowed to get your pierced? No. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> yeah. Tattoos were, that was, like, obvious. Right. With, like, the earrings. I mean, he would just... Harassed me to the point that like I think he would have ripped it out. It yeah. He would have done that. Then like called me yeah, a couple yeah. names. Yeah, he would have said you like dudes. Yeah, yeah. like to suck old on dicks. He, my my boy's a fanoink. <laughs> <laughs> all right, is that all the voicemails? Uh, take a break. All right, everybody, we take quick. Know it's Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're come quick. on, Mishka. <laughs> we're gonna take a quick commercial break. We'll come back. We we'll got more of that Greenfield's finest podcast. Let's talk about Twelve Whiskey Barbecue. One hundred bottled craft beers. 28 drafts from local brewers, and some amazing food all in one place at 1222 East Carson Street in Southside. They also do catering. That's 12 Whiskey Barbecue. Learn more at 12pgh.com. That's T-W-E-L-V-E-P-G-H dot com. When an appliance breaks at home, you want to get it fixed immediately. You need someone dependable, someone that's quick and reliable. You need Primetime Appliance, 412-896-1395. Ovens, dishwashers, microwaves, and more. That's primetimeappliance.com. Our pal Artie has dropped a line of hot sauces, and I'm here to tell you about them. We got Arbel and Sandy, Habanero Island, Teriyaki Thai, Pizza Shop, Sweet Jalapeno, Hoppin' Jalapeno, Triple Pepper Fret, and the Hot and Sour Serrano. That's seven different Pittsburgh hot sauces to try. Check them out at artieshotsauce.com. A-R-T-I-E-S hotsauce.com. Have you guys checked out Fat Butcher in Lawrenceville? They're at 5151 Butler Street. They bring the old school classic neighborhood butcher back to Pittsburgh. All the meat is sourced locally straight from Western PA Farms. Visit their website for more info at fatbutcher.com. Hey, hey, come here. I don't know if you guys heard, but at GFP headquarters, Z-Bird won't stop sticking his dick in electrical sockets. It's become a problem. We even have to have Plug Electric on standby just for the aftermath. And honestly, they're amazing. You should have them for all your electrical needs. Ask for Vance Hall, 412-298-6770, 412-298-6770. And Z-Bird, for the love of God, please stop sticking your dick in electrical sockets. Hey guys, it's E.T. Are you in the real estate market right now? You should talk to Carlson and Associates. From buying to selling or even property management, they got you covered. They're located in the heart of Southside with a finger on the pulse of the Pittsburgh area. And that's for commercial and residential. Call 412-431-1718 or visit www.casouthside.com. Hey guys, you want to make a podcast like us? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easy. Then they distribute it everywhere for you. 
and it's even easy to earn money. All in one place for free, and it's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or your computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating your podcast today and then distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Greenfield's Finest Podcast. We're about to jump into Corn Dick of the Week. We got a few of them. Money line. Who be Corn Dicking this week? Zion's big as a house. Yeah. Did you see old Stephen A? It was like, he was like, he's in New Orleans. People in restaurants are calling me, telling them they want Zion to come to his restaurant because he's going to eat the table. <laughs> like, I mean, like he's going to eat the table. And like Zion is, he's fat. Called that, him rotund. Yeah, yeah, that's not a good pick. Like that, that, that's a good picture. That's of a him. great picture of him. That's an old pick. Uh, Zion's a fat ass. And and the thing is, like the team got on him. Like the fitness people, they were like, "Dude, you got to like change your diet." And he has the abilities to be one of the best players. I don't want to say ever, but of definitely of this generation. And it's like he's done none of the. He work. has the ability to get max contracts throughout his whole career. Right, and he's done everything in his power. To like fuck up his career, but also at the same time, one max contract. If you spend, if you if you hold on to that money, that's enough money forever too. Sure it is. So it's like I don't know what makes so him what's happier. So he, what's he going to get paid right now? Like if he like, never whatever a, like a max is, it's like over. Is he 100. on the max? Yeah, he's maxed. Right. So and, and the thing is, like with him being on the max, but if, also not being yeah, that great would, of a pl- like all this other shit. No one wants to go to New Orleans. And no one wants him. So New Orleans, he kind of fucked them for a few years. New Orleans food is fire. Like, what, tell me about it. It's just different. It's like, it, it tastes different like anything you never, like, tasted before. A lot of spices. A lot of spices. Gumbo, beignets, like, fuck, and they got gator down there. Are you a it, seafood guy? See Any seafood you could get your fucking mitts on. And, like, it, you would just go to, like, I had some of the best tacos I ever had in my life down there. Like, so you would just go to these places, and, like, we weren't seeking out any special places, and we'd go eat, and we're like, dude, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Joe had some gator sausage that he liked. We, uh, and we weren't, it was it was more booze than food, but I just remember being like, this is, like, this is different. This is fire. And the only problem with it is they're, they're so laid back down there, like, so, so laid back, that, like, eating is like a, you don't get your food forever. And there's no complaining because, like, it's just, like, what shut up? Yeah. You know, you what fucking north, yeah, you, up, you, Yankee. You, you northeast crybaby. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, when it gets yeah, you'll get it whenever, whenever you come. Like, relax, have a drink. Relax, have a drink. I'm like, dude, I got a Steeler game to go to. You know, the whole trip, I'm here. The whole reason I'm here. Yeah. But that being said, like, dude, gumbo, it, it is. It's it's some good good stuff. So I understand why he's getting fat. Yeah, I'm saying if you got the trainers, I, I, that's what I would. If you got trainers in the best, like you could probably have a chef that could still. Got, make, not probably. You got a thousand percent. Hundred to do. Chef. Yeah. Yeah. If you have you have the ability to have a chef, it, you have, there's no reason for you to be fat. Speaking of Greenfield Mike, man, this fucking guy. He, I know he just had his appendix up. Oh, definitely up for coach of the year, having a hell of a season. But how, why is Greenfield Mike fat? Like, there's Ozempic. There's all these mm-hmm. drugs out there. He's rich. He could go to the facility. He doesn't even have to keep it in his crib. There's a doctor there every day that will shoot him up with Ozempic. Get on a little TRT, dude. Get it cooking. Get healthy, buddy. Yeah, we don't. Well, yeah, you know what I mean. Like drop him and couple. Andy Reid. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, dude, a- Andy Reid in them dude. commercials, it, they got me dying when he was like, "How about them nuggies?" Yeah, I was, dude. I was, like, <laughs> I was like half asleep, half awake last night, and I just like it was Andy Reid, like. Let's talk about them nuggies. And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like chuckled in my like sleep. <laughs> Cause he's like so funny, dude. Cause I can picture him trying to get the nuggies. If I was like stupid rich, I think a, a personal chef is like number one on my list, dude. Yeah, I'd love a personal chef. Love. It'd be so easy to eat good. So easy. I eat like shit. Ugh. I think I think a lot of people that work outside and like. You tend to eat like shit because you're like you could pack a lunch for sure, and it's a little bit healthier. But then you're like, I, I want a pizza today. I want a pizza today. Yeah, and you're then starving. You, I want then, something hot. I want yeah. Then five days in a row, you ate pizza, pizza, hoagie, pizza, hoagie, pizza. Yeah, but you're on day three of a salami sandwich. You want to blow your brains out too. So it's just like I what had to abandon ship. Yeah, halfway through the season, I have to. I'm done with the lunch meat. Yeah, 
I, I could only do lunch meat for like real short stints at this time. Yeah. Thinking lunch meat's like horrendous for you. Probably. Yeah. All processed. Yeah, if you it's think about it, like, if you think about it, it's probably real bad. Uh yeah, I was always like get my own lunch when I when I now I want some freaking gumbo. <laughs> yeah, Thinking about the salami. Good. Dude's friends not coming to his birthday. So what this girl girl was throwing a birthday party for her, her, her boyfriend invited like twenty people and like all twenty people declined. Yeah, so That's this rough. was fucked up. So the girl made a TikTok about it. She like had like a cool idea for her boyfriend's thirtieth birthday party. It was gonna be like really fun. So she invited all of his friends. Which are like twenty friends. It's like pretty normal number of like dudes you like hang out with, and every single one of them declined. So she like planned this with this dude's parents. Like they pitched in. This was an expensive event. It wasn't like a cheap event. And every one of his friends said, "I can't make it." So I don't think twenty friends as an adult or like into your thirties. I think that's an insane amount. I think we're very fortunate yeah. that somehow we all kept like pretty tight like throughout the years. That ain't the case, and it's not even the case for like different generations of Greenfield. You know what I right. mean? Like it's. I think with somehow we've all managed to stay pretty tight. So like, for us, twenty people seems no like no big deal. But for most people our age, I think they would have a hell of a time trying to get twenty Especially people to if, do like, anything. You moved out of your hometown, right? You might be inviting coworkers. So and shit. Right. With the, I didn't right. get a chance to read this. So was this like a thing where like they weren't really his friends? They were just kind of like. Why am I invited to this shit? No, it wasn't. Th they didn't give off that vibe. It was 20 people. It made it seem like in the video that they were people that he had been associating with. Now, maybe he was in, like, fantasy football leagues with him, something like that. But she was personally, like, sending it because it was a surprise party. The RSV, like, hey, just get back. Over 20 is cold. And then, like, to not get one person to be like, hey, like, I'm like, man, I, like, we're like, was one dude behind all this, like, sabotage? Like, dude. We ain't going to Jimmy's. That party. could be like one group, like message and shit. Like, you know, one guy's just like you just say, like, you dudes going to Jimmy's birthday party? Like, dude, I ain't trying to. Like, dude, I'm I not. Fu know. I'm not fucking going. Like, yeah, I barely know. I'm in a golf league with that dude, and like, that's it. To, and and I see you know you go over twenty on friends. And then she's on like TikTok, like crying, and like, you well, that's a brutal thing to find out that your fucking boyfriend has, has zero a, friends. And I think like like a lot of people were like heckling her, like, dude. I actually thought she was a good girlfriend for trying to have the Kind of worried about him. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you have any real, like, why don't you have any friends? I think those what, dudes They made a movie with that. Paul Rudd and Jason, uh, whatever his name is, the guy from Saving Sarah Silverman. Yeah. Or, yeah, not Saving. Well, where he doesn't have uh, a best Paul, man. For, dude from Jay, he, did, he was in uh, that movie, how or the TV show How I Met Your Mother, the big dude. Jason. Jason something. Siegel. Siegel, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul Rudd doesn't have any, any have any friends, and like he had, puts like an ad out for a friend yeah. or meets this guy, becomes best friends, needs the best man in the wedding. Yeah, yeah, not a bad flick, but that's what I, I yeah, at over twenty is brutal, man. I would say this. I think like just dudes like us. Let's just say hypothetically speaking, like someone was like a big fan of the podcast or something like that, and like their girlfriend or wife reached out to us like, hey, you know, my boyfriend loves the podcast. or ain't chance you guys could show up. There's no. I think like just because we know how important it is, like the, we would at least make an effort. If to try I to if I get invited to something where I think like there's a reason I'm invited to it, like kind of like like a, I'm going, you yeah. know what I mean? Like if it's like a big thing where I know it's like probably like the, the, the I have a better chance of skipping one of my closer friends thing than I would like uh, more of an acquaintance. You know what I mean? Right. Like there's been there's been things I've been invited to. Like this is kind of weird. I'm invited to it, but like I'm gonna go. Yeah. It's a good dude. Yeah. And it, it, that, that's You're it. a good dude or the person invited you? I'm a good dude. <laughs> you only am a good dude all of a sudden now, John? I'm just asking. I just wasn't I got sure white socks on today. What do you think of those? <laughs> I, I mean, are we going to wear shorts all the way through the year? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I am. I'm that guy. I'm 41 yep. wearing shorts, and that's it. That's it. Uh, the fucking, this OnlyFans fucking guy. Spent sixty two a month on an OnlyFans. It's like it's it's like a rapper, right, or something like that. No. So what? So here's what happened. So okay, two grand. He spent sixty two grand a month on this chick's OnlyFans. Dude looks like he works at Time Bomb. He's the most pathetic. <laughs> like, and he was like spending. Now here's the thing. That chick posted. It, it, so you can't see this if you're listening. This, this chick's pretty hot. She posts this picture. Just ran into my number one fan. Find out he spends, you know, find out who he is. He actually spends 62000 a month. Let me tell you something, sister. You didn't just run into him. 
He's stalking you. Yeah, stalking. And he made all of his money. He was actually on MTV's back of the day, True Life, I'm Addicted to Porn. He ended up like going through like a, a rough patch of just beating his meat and ended up making all of his money in cryptocurrency. So, dude, that's just a stupid amount of money right 62 now. 62 grand a month is a ton and of money. And you're not even, all you're, all you're getting is a gander or some cooter. You could probably buy me personally for, for 62, 62 grand a month. That's right? what I'm saying. He could probably like buy own, her. You can't owe me 24 7, but you could owe me a good amount of the week. I'm not saying you could like fuck me or whatever, but like, I don't know. I don't, maybe you can for 62 but, grand a month. And that's what I'm thinking. Like, and, and she'd be an idiot, though. To fuck him now for sixty two grand if she just like teases him along. But if like is that you think that's the only thing? Like that's all he got is that picture? Sixty two grand a month. You you gotta be throwing it off a little bit, right? Well, I mean at least let jerk off on you or something. Next to you. <laughs> yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, like what are you doing later? Like, let him fill that boot up with some cum or something. Right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Can I smell your socks? <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the same time, I would imagine this chick is extremely creeped out too. Well look some- at her in the picture. Like, I, I, how much content? Did she is, meet him on purpose? Like, that was like a, the thing for spending. I, the most money? I, it was like worded, like ran into my biggest fan. That, uh, that's what I thought it was too. Why, yeah. John? Did you? Well, I seen the pit. Like, she had the number of like sixty three thousand. Yeah, I think he like kind of ran up on her. Like, I'm like, gonna be here because it did say like happened to run into right. Or yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it happened to run. So, which like that could have been planned still. It right. could have been a. But at the same time. Like Z Bird said, if you're spending sixty two and a grand on some fucking pictures and like some little bit of porn, you're probably st- doing a little bit of stalking. Especially this, only this this dude was on True Life. I'm um, addicted to porn. OnlyFans is the worst thing that ever happened to this guy. Yeah, so he he'll be ju- broke in ten years. Yeah, th- and like I don't know how much he made during the crypto phase, but like, better be a billion dollars, right? Because he's spending money like it's fucking going out of style. And like looking at him. Yeah. Ugly. Yeah, he's not a handsome yeah, fella. Ugly. He kind of, got yeah, overweight. He's kind of a mutant. Stupid pants. J- definitely like tries to dress like he's eighteen, but he's really like forty. Probably thousand dollar pants. Yeah. He's probably thousand dollar pants. Then he'll have to sell. You know what I mean? At some point to get more booty pictures. My man, they got pants at Costco for thirteen bucks. Right. I just got a hoodie there for twelve, and like you know, it's what I mean? nice he, too. He bought her, uh, like, dude, he bought her a car, a nice car, sixty-two grand, a nice car. And all she did was Fuck flash yeah. her sixty two grand's a nice car. She she flashed a picture of her shark fin pie. Man, it's easy easy to make money on the internet if you're a hot. If chick, you had dude. a bl- if you had a a pink wig, you could probably make sixty two grand. Think I could. Yeah. I think I'd have to start dyeing my beard again a little bit or something. Yeah, but like, dude, like, imagine like what you, if you post- dyed it pink with pink hair. Yeah. If I'm making sixty two grand a month. Yeah. John, at this point, Put them earrings in. At this point, Ooh, at this boy. point, this stage in my life. Right now, there's not much <laughs> I wouldn't do for sixty two grand a month. Dude, you have that brand new asshole and you know what I mean? Like dudes would be paying for it. They'd be like, yeah. You wanna get a ga- you wanna get a gander in my you one don't eye need winker? To bleach it or anything. Yeah, that it's thing's ready. brand new, fresh out the box. Like yeah. you know what I mean? You got a fresh new sphincter. So they're like, Oh dude, I wanna see that new that pink hair jack's butthole. And, you know, he's like, he's charging thirty dollars a butthole shot. And you're like, Oh man, it's worth it. You man. could rake you could be raking it in right now. I would now. just Maybe bottle shot, bottle <laughs> shot, bottle. Like what you, what do you do? He'd be so fed up with. Yeah, like dude, enough. Pink. Like dude, listen, <laughs> sixty-two grand a month. We got, a, we're selling bottles all day. Yeah, hey, I got sun, college to pay for. Sun up, sun down. Well, like, why do you need peanut butter? Like, shut up, <laughs> put the baby to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last one, corn dick. Guy ripped up a lottery ticket in Indiana. What happened here, Zebert? So, uh, in Indiana, the. Standard procedure is after you scan a ticket, it's a loser. Dude rips it up. The student came in with a stack of tickets. The clerk was literally just loser, loser, loser. Dude checks it. So all of a sudden, he rips it up. As he's ripping it up, the thing awesome. goes off. Woo, woo, woo. Congratulations, $50,000 winner. As the clerk ripped it up. The state of Indiana, it was all caught on film. Allowed the dude to tape. get allowed to get the dude to get his money, but they were like to the dude, like you're not just supposed to. But I get the dude who rips up the tickets because you're probably like these are all fucking loot. You know what I mean? What do you got to rip them up for? Throw them in the garbage. That's true. Rip well, it. Oh no, you it's do, a loser. No, you do have to rip them up because what people do now. So say you'll get tickets, and if you throw them out, people take those old tickets and they use them on tax credits. Why can't that guy use them? He can. He can hang on to him. Right. But yeah. but if you're checking him for me, rip him up. That's just standard procedure in Indiana. 
Everybody knows that, John. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody knows question. that one. Uh, brother in arms, taxi driver in Tokyo sent to prison for running over a pr- pigeon. <laughs> that fucking Good. nuts. Yeah. It was. He's it, doing time. It was like time time, too. It wasn't anything crazy. I mean, pigeons, you should get like an extra. Like Tokyo should be passing out money. You, you kill a pigeon, you know, you get a 50. Well, that's dinner for someone over there. That's true. Dude, yeah, I, I mean, seen a video today. This poor guy was like walking into his back door. Fucking pigeon flew right into his head hard as fuck. They don't give a fuck, man. There was a, it's a little bit off topic. There's a couple YouTube creators that were going over, they went over to Japan and they were like doing stupid stunts recording themselves. And the one dude, like they were like breaking into places, doing dumb shit, but they were streaming all of this. Japan fucking police got a hold of this. And they were like, they're making assholes out of us. So they told the dude, like, hey, listen, we just want to talk to you. Come down to the police station. You know what I mean? So the dude, they had everything these dudes did caught on fo- on film. Literally, they let the one, the cameraman, as of right now, they let him out of jail, but he still has to stay in Japan. The other dude is looking at 30 years in prison for doing shit like throwing an egg at a bus. Uh, he walked into a, a warehouse. Stupid shit like that. Like, you guys are fucking idiots. Fuck around in America where no one gives a fuck. Right, but they were going over there. It was for strength. It's like the dumb shit people do for clout. You know what I mean? It just fucking blows my mind. Dude's probably going to spend... They're going to throw the book at him. He's probably going to spend the rest of his life in jail for throwing an egg at a bus. Yeah, I don't think the guy deserves, like, life or something like that, but he probably deserves a year to, like, reevaluate being stupid. Yeah, absolutely. Get his mind right. Uh, Ref drops wax. Oh, ref last night dropped a weed pen. Yeah. That was, uh, did you see that? No. Video last night. In the Uh, NBA? No, Titans. Uh, Titans. (laughs) Who do they fucking play? Miami. Miami. Yeah, Miami. Ref bends over to pick up a ball, drops a weed pen right on the ground. So what, John? You just hear weed and you just think NBA? (laughs) Jeez. You said ref. Please, buddy. It It kind of just looks like a regular pen to me right there, no? Yeah. Maybe it's tobacco. Yeah. It It might be. It got some bounce to it, too. And and it, I mean, yeah, which brings up the point, like, people can't do shit anymore. And it's so over. It is weird to have your weed pen in your pocket to go ref a game. And th- this is why I said I miss the good old days when something would be a non-story. Like I always think, like, what's the point of being like super famous, having all this money now if you still get in trouble for stuff? Yeah, you can't do anything. <laughs> you can't leave your house now. Well, the, the weed old- pen, maybe just like I said, that's something. It's not a big deal, but he's it's not going to hit it while he's doing the game. But yeah, he's probably no, forgot to put it. You probably put it in a locker. It. Put it in a locker. Yeah, you can forget. Yeah, you're hitting weed before the game. Uh <laughs> it's just funny. That's where we are right now. Dudes are like refs are dropping weed pens and I don't have NFL games. And, well, and, and that and here's the thing about that. That will get blown out of proportion now to every call that got made during that. Do game. refs get uh, drug tested? I wonder. I'm sure. Do you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah, I bet they do. They're like a union, I think, and everything like that. So there's probably some type of drug test. I, I'd be interesting. I, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm sure. I don't most think they would test them for the fact like. Hey, if these dudes get off to they're fucking doing coke and shit like that, like they might start throwing the games. You know what I mean? They might be able to like. Man, what about old Patty Mahomes and his reaction to that offsides? Oh, uh, he was more mad at Kadarius Tony. He didn't want to come out. And you say gotta yell it. at Tony. Tony, that dude fucks everything up, man. Yeah, he'd fuck up a one car funeral. He just fucking. He's a fucking buffoon. But Mahomes didn't want to come out and say Kadarius Tony. But like, I, I think in his mind it was a small infraction. That the ref should have gave him a warning, but you got to look to the ref. Am I good? You got to look. And he look. never looks. That's what you and do it was, every time you go out. You just right. put your. So that dude. That's what they tell you here. Just yeah. ask. Am I good? Am I on the line? Yeah. yeah right. That's, that's it. it. That's it. That's look it. over. It's on. It's hundred percent on Tony. They would have been like and this. I'd back he, him up. He was way off sides. Right. It was. Yeah. And they threw it before that play happened. It wasn't like it, but they threw it right away. Yeah. No. It was a thousand percent the right call. Yeah. It was a great play that Kelsey did. But yeah. You and lost. Mo was just like, if Kelsey, he's gonna be a Hall of Famer, and now that's not gonna be part of his highlight tape. Like, dude, they're still gonna put in the real tra- uh, Patrick. Relax. <laughs> he like, he like backed off on it today and just said he overreacted. Yeah. He did the moment. I get it. And he did what he he wanted to take it out on Tony, but he's probably a little scared of Tony because Tony doesn't look like he's all there. <laughs> yeah, so he's he probably he's, he looks like he'll cut you. He, yeah. he looks like a little cross-eyed. Dude. Yeah, he looks a little nutty. So Plus, I mean, he wanted to win rest. the game. They lost to Buffalo. Like, they're struggling. Listen, I'm not like – I'm not – I don't believe in, like, you can't call that in that situation. If it's a penalty, it's a penalty. you got to call it all the time. Happened this weekend in the state playoffs. Westinghouse is playing uh, Southern Columbia. Southern Columbia is some loaded school up in uh, 
Eastern Pennsylvania. They win every fucking year. Uh, it's pretty much a central, like even like even more so. They can recruit from anywhere and anywhere, and they do. And they load up a super team, and they play in the city league, and they blow fucking people out. And then, like I think every one of their games this year was uh, mercy roll. Mercy roll. Westinghouse went up there. They had the game won. It looked like they had it iced. Fuck, and there was a holding pass interference, like holding call. It was a thousand. They called it. Southern Columbia ends up winning the game. Westinghouse loses. It was a thousand percent a hold. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a, a horrible. I feel horrible for Westinghouse. They a hundred percent deserve to win that game. But like, if it's a hold, it's a hold. You got to call it. So that's what I was thinking when Mahomes was throwing a little hissy fit yesterday too. Right, and they still had plays after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To like get the it get was the a job sick done. play. It was. It was nice. Yeah, it was crazy, but it shall be forgotten. Chiefs are losing games. Yeah. Eight and five. Well, you got Kadarius Tony. Fucking, <laughs> he lost two games for you now. Yeah. The who was the other? Yeah. Who was the other dude that dropped that ball the week before? Valdez Scantling. Yeah. Yeah. Lost yeah, it. Their receivers stink, man. Uh, Mike McCarthy loses his appendix, win games. That's just Greenville shit. <laughs> uh, everybody knows Greenville guys don't have great appendixes. <laughs> but you guys both have your appendix, right? Yeah, I got mine. Yeah. You got your appendix. Yeah. I don't have mine. Uh, Greenville Mike doesn't have his. Chip said he doesn't have his. Uh, so yeah, we just don't have uh don't have great appendixes. <laughs> so, a chip don't have his. Nah, either. chip hit me up said I'm missing an appendix as well. Uh, so I had a few guys reach out. You know, I tweeted it and they're like, "Hey, you're right about that appendixes. We don't hang on to them too much." Uh, appendix, getting your appendix out doesn't hurt. Leading up to like, I shit, I need my appendix out is one of the more painful things of all time. It is crazy, man. It hurts like hell. Exactly Where's it hurt at? It? So it starts to feel like so it, your appendix is here. It starts so that your appendix is on your right side. It starts to hurt on your left, but it doesn't really start to hurt at first. It starts to feel like like you have to shit. So like I remember getting up ten thousand fucking times. I ate the Sal's pizza. I was motherfucking the Sal's, <laughs> but like you can't shit, and then it gets worse and it's worse. And it's worse. And next thing you know, you're like killed over crying in the uh, emergency waiting waiting room, waiting for them to take you back. Uh, and that's what happened to me. But like the surgery, they bang it out. It's just old a, a boom, boom. I was uh, like a freshman in college, like old and like old enough. But it fucking it hurt. And then diverticulitis was like a very similar it was a very similar pain to the point where I didn't wait around because I remember the appendix pain. And like it's it started the same way. I felt like I had a shit. I felt out of shit. I was like, I know what this is. We gotta go to the emergency room. And then started that whole. I just don't have good guts. I don't. Have, my guts are aren't great, man. They're the, not great. You uh, the appendix is one of the things they take out. Doesn't That's make no big deal. Point. Mike was back on the field on Sunday, yeah. especially with it, especially now. They suck. I didn't have no health insurance. They cut me like a, it was, I was a Viking back in the day. <laughs> with like, a hot, so, a hot yeah. butter knife. They go, no health insurance here. Come here, I'll do it with a fucking. Get this kid out of here. Do it with a fucking toenail clipper. <laughs> oh. A flea market. That's all it is. Is like a little piece, right? Yeah, and like they 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 were doing them like orthos or, I'm never gonna say this word orthoscopically. Yeah, it sounds yeah, right. Pretty close enough. close. close enough. They were doing them that way, like through your belly button. We're like, there is no scar, and they're like, yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna cut you open and pull it out. <laughs> uh, might not have a scar. They like, oh yeah, they slap some glue on it. Horrible scar. <laughs> scar. Luckily enough, <laughs> diverticulitis. They cut over that scar again, so now I have, like this crazy like mega scar on my stomach. <laughs> they like form together, kind of look a little deformed when I take my shirt off. But you know, I'm healthy now. Everything's go everything, everything's it's going good matters. now. A uh, man arrested at Come and Go gas station because he uh, jerked off. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Else Come and go, K U M, and go. Uh, where in the world was this located? Stan South. Down south, they're, I, they're pretty, up to high drinks. High drinks down Georgia, there. I think yeah. it was Georgia. K U M and Go is a wild name for a gas station. Oh uh, yeah, but I don't know. You're on the road for a while. You could jerk off in gas stations. Well, yeah, for what a truck. Was he like standing outside of a car? Uh, apparently, he wasn't too sneaky. No, nah, he was just at the gas pump firing away. They, uh, oh, he's at the pump. Yeah, he's at the pump. Uh, see, the that's pump. a gray area. Because that's you got a gray too much area. Action around it. Yeah, I, you know. If you're doing it in, so if you're jerking off at the gas pump, you're gonna want to at least open your like passenger door, jerk off there a little bit, little hiding. If, if you're doing it, doors closed. Now it's a little weird. Yeah, like if you just got the thing in there, and some people are behind you waiting. You're trying to, to fuck your car. 
You know, you're Sticking spraying, your dick in you're a spraying gas, gas on your dick. Yeah. Man, that would either feel really good or really or burn really I have bad. a feeling it would burn. Probably Get some burn. of that diesel on your yeah. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I call one diesel dick. If you, <laughs> had, if you had to spray your dick down with some type of uh, petro, yeah. What, or what do you choose? And you go in unleaded, you go in fucking... The E85. Yeah. That's yeah. What you call it the least ethanol in it. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't want to burn my dick off. Yeah. <laughs> nice and, something nice and clean. Yeah. That diesel's going to hurt. That diesel's going to burn right through that wiener. Oh, uh, yeah. You're going to be fucking jizzing green. <laughs> what does this mean? A, a baby ha- who has DNA results on his onesie? Oh, see... shit. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. so uh, Miami Dolphins player, I can't remember the dude's name, uh... His, uh, there he is, his, Xavier Howard, his, ba- he uh, allegedly has, right now he has four women pregnant. So I don't know how true that is. But I do know that he did have a baby with this woman. And she had this onesie made and posted on social media. And it says, Xavier Howard is my NFL deadbeat dad. He tells people I'm not his child, but the DNA test proves that he, that that was a lie. On the back... We don't have the picture back. I've seen the back. The back is the actual fucking DNA test from the laboratories. Like, this is one this of the poor kids. This poor kid's fucked. Even like his dad's an NFL player, makes a good living. This kid's fucked. Because here's the. Here's the the mom's going to raise him. He's fucked. Right. Because the mom is going to. Uh, I, I get it. I, I'm not in this situation. I'm not like sticking up for the dude. I didn't know my dad and shit. But like, you're not helping this situation by doing this. Like, it's not like. Well, putting your baby out there. Yeah. No. no it's uh, one of the more trashier things I've ever seen before in my life. And that's why the baby's the brother in arms. Because yeah. I'm like, dude, I feel bad for that little dude. Yeah, his parents for are For one time, I mean, I get it. But you're that's allegedly. That, that part, I'm not 100% I'm sure. I'm sure it happens I don't in the get NFL. It. I don't get it. It. Like you're slamming everything. Listen, I I, I get you're know. slamming everything. A little bit of precaution. A little bit of precaution. You can't leave it in. It's just that's all. That's all you can do. Just don't leave it in. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't just be firing loads and every everything you fuck, <laughs> and then be shocked when people are popping up with kids. You can't leave it in. Yep. But like, yeah, he's definitely. I mean, <laughs> the, the baby is wearing the DNA results. Yep. All right. Let's take a break. All right, everybody, we're taking a quick commercial break. We'll come back. We've got more of that Greenfield's Finest podcast. You might recognize my voice from Greenfield's Finest podcast, but you'd recognize my face more from Rosado and Sons Landscaper, where I've been an employee for over five years, where I work with owner son, John Rosado. If you're looking for quality landscaping, pressure washing, snow removal, and lawn maintenance, which includes fertilizer, grub control, weed killer, call 412 412- Five two one nine zero four five. This isn't some pop up operation. They've been in business for over eighty years. So if you want good quality work, call Rosado and Sons Landscaping at four one two five two one nine zero four five. Tell them Z Bird sent you and get the special discount. Hey, what's going on, everybody? If you're having car problems right now, there's not really too many places to go that you can trust. One place you can is Meineke Car Care Center, located at 4103 Kennywood Boulevard, West Mifflin. They handle everything, not just oil changes, but brakes, maintenance, everything. So if you need, if you have car trouble and you need help, make sure you call Meineke Car Care Center, 4103 Kennywood Boulevard, West Mifflin, phone number 412-451-451. 8968 and ask for Arthur. Did you just get the bad news that your girlfriend's fucking your neighbor? Well, it sounds like a pretty shitty situation. I got just the answer. Miracle Movers. Need to move in a hurry? Call Miracle Movers. 412-419-2620. They're fully bonded and insured, and you're not taking any risk like you are with your whore girlfriend. So call Miracle Movers at 412-419-2620. And get out of that house before you catch any STDs. Did you just walk into your bathroom and take a giant shit and realize that your bathroom is a giant pile of shit? Well, I got the answer for you. Bath Factory and Window. You dream it and they build it. Bath Factory and Window. 412-951-3939. From your bathroom to your windows, transform your home with Bathroom Factory and Window. You can also find them at bathfactoryandwindow.com. Hey, what's going on, folks? I don't know if you knew this, but the number one pe- reason people get lawsuits against them when people come over to their house is faulty steps, faulty sidewalks. What are you going to do about it? Your house is a walking booby trap. Well, you can call Giuseppe and Sons. Need your sidewalk and steps fixed or replaced? Call Giuseppe and Sons at 
421-6711. And if you're looking for any masonry work in the Pittsburgh area, these are the guys you can trust. That's 412-421-6711. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Greenfield Finance Podcast. We're about to jump into what's grinding our gears. John, angry John, what's grinding them gears? You know what makes me angry? Is, <laughs> is when I get up to do a task at the house and I'm like watching TV to come back to the room and the TV's off and the light's off. Like I was never coming back and I left for like two minutes. I'm, who does that? Who do you think? <laughs> oh. That's insane. Every time. Is it like, do you think that's a message to you? Like, hey, quit watching TV? It could be. Or it's, I just can't take that noise. I just took the dog outside, took him a little, a little, take a little pee. Maybe I take a poop. So it, may, it might have been, a, it might have been five to ten minutes. I come back and it's just like shut down. And now you guys restore. Living the- rooms closed for the shut evening. Shut down. That's yeah. nuts. That would fucking drive me insane. Like, like put the, I get put the TV on mute for a second. Or You're, something. I, turn it down. I like, or just don't do anything. Just leave it go. I'm coming back. It's a TV. It's background. Did you noise. hear the it's car really turn bo- on and me drive and leave? Yeah. Well, how, well, how was that really bothering you? Uh, my, wait to hear my gear. <laughs> she's right. doing it to you. She wants. She's looking to bother you. Is what's yeah. happening, dude. And then yeah, she'll dude. She'll like do shit. This I thought you're about. I thought you're about to say like the electric bill. Like she's like, we're not here. And- no, she could care less about the electric <laughs> bill. <laughs> yeah, it's- like cause she'll just leave rain like a kitchen light on at night for like the dog. Like I don't know what's going on with this baby. All of a sudden, we have a baby now. Every light in the world, the baby isn't turning them on. <laughs> But like, dude, we just the lights are on fucking constantly. It's nuts, dude. And I have a feeling once you get older, it's not getting any better. But it's uh, I just don't know what's happening in my house right now. Well, who's turning on? Obviously, it's it's Lenny, but I off. yeah, and it's just like she don't want to be scared of the dark. No, I just think she's like moving around and looking for shit, and it's just like light, light, light. And I was just yeah. sitting there like, dude, we're in an operating room right now. What the <laughs> fuck's going on? Have said that like when my kids and everybody's like downstairs and like everything's on. I am like the dad now. Like, turn this turn fucking it. shit off. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. They don't shut doors for some reason. Like Nah, kids don't shut all doors. Four of them that live in my house <laughs> don't shut the door when they come in the house. Johanna don't shut doors she either. Don't shut the door either. Dude, I think I've said this before. That might be my that's a pet peeve for like nah, I'm not when it's freezing. Like shut the, shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Ah uh, yeah, I don't get it. Kids kids don't give a fuck about the cold. They don't wear coats. They don't fucking I mean, they'll wear a coat, but they're going to fight you on it. Yeah, they're going to fight. I remember just being in battles with, like, bring your coat. Like, fuck that coat. <laughs> and it, <laughs> yeah. like, it like took me into, like, adulthood where, like, I didn't wear coats until, like, I got older and start getting cold. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, fucking, I just, I wear shorts and I battle this because I'm coming from aerobics and I'm too lazy to put my pants on. <laughs> but, like, I at this age, I bundle the fuck up. Oh, yeah. I got to walk my dog, dude. I got this. Yeah, hoodie, nice put little my coat. coat. On. I, love I zip that baby up, put my yeah, hood on. I love a coat. I got this Patagonia one. It's like a fucking cloud. <laughs> Can't wait to put that thing on. Zebra, what do you got? So I bought this real nice water thing for my house. It keeps the water hot. It keeps the water cold. I enjoy it. I can make coffee instantly. Are we talking, so what, are you talking about like a jug? No. Yeah, the thing that holds the jug, but it has a Keurig in it. Okay. That thing I I was happy about when I bought it. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, I got cold water, and then I can make a coffee instantly. So wake up the one morning, put the cure again. I'm not really paying attention. Slam it down, hit the button, walk away, come back, nothing happened. I'm like, what the fuck? It was unplugged. You know, I'm like, oh, this is weird. So I plug it back in. Have to wait for it to heat up and everything like that. Didn't know what happened to it. <laughs> come back later that day after work. It's unplugged again. I'm oh, like, my. how far away is your cord to like the uh, outlet? Right there. Right there. So it's that's insane. okay. It's so like, dude, it yeah. takes a little while to, to gear back uh, up. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so I'm like, I, I didn't know what was going on. So I like question like my girlfriend like, what, what's going on? Is like something like, and then I find out like, it does draw some electricity, but it was making like the the dining room light flicker a little bit, but like, I'm still like, what's the point of having this if we're not going to have cold water? And then it came down to, I had baseball cards in this one room and it was all, uh, and so I'm like, okay, you, you made your is, point. This like, is, uh, the icing on the cake. Yeah. So I'm like, but can we please just leave this plugged in? Like, this is so convenient for us. We could drink coffee whenever we want, have ice cold water whenever we want. Like, it's just, it's like, 
Let's, let me enjoy this. Yeah, let's just let this go. That would I, my when he like told me the story, I felt like my blood pressure raised. Like, yeah, why? like this is where because it takes ten minutes for that wa- for that water yeah. to heat up, right. and you just want that coffee. And we're, and that was two, and it started a week. This we're, is the hill you're gonna die on. We're, we're, two weeks ago, like when we were running, getting towards the end of work week for and uh, end of the work year, and you're like, you're getting up. You're it's like, cold as fuck. It, it was cold out. You wanted to be down there a little early. Throw your coffee on, drink it, and get the fuck out. And like that day, it wasn't on. Like I didn't even think nothing of it. But when I came home and it was unplugged again, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, something's up here. S- someone's unplugging this. Yeah, this thing didn't just fall out of the wall. It sure didn't. No, and I was like, come on, but I said, I'll do anything. I'll pay whatever money it costs. So it's not about that. It's flickering the lights, and we're and we came to it. A, a, an agreement. We're gonna leave it plugged in. I gotta clean up this card room. Get a power. Get like a power cord. Yeah, or something. I don't want to beef over this. Like I don't want to like but piss also, her you off. You bought it. And you yeah, wanna use it. And I want to use it. So I'm like, let's come to a conclusion. We did. You know, it's like compromise. Like, ca- that's it. That's. That, I mean, compromise. that's what it's all about in this life. Right. Uh, I switched back to. I bought our big present to herself with the baby was a new coffee maker, and I went back to like a pot. I went. I bought this fucking sweet ass ninja fucking coffee maker, and I'm I'm fucking I'm I'm brewing pots. I was a I was a Keurig guy for a long time. I got these pots going, man, and they are fire. Good. You grind your own bean. Uh, we we kind of were for a second. I was like, this is this is a lot because you know that it's that, noise. That, yeah. That remember she was trying to do the French press. Yes. And I was like, dude, I'm drinking grounds here. What is yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, and I she was, that. I heard these Keurigs like aren't good for you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, we got to, like, let's let's do a little research and find something here because this, this French press ain't fucking it, dude. I, I was getting the muddiest cups of coffee <laughs> ever. I was going to kill myself. Like, dude, we can't, we got to figure something out here. And we did. We got this sweet ass ninja. And now I'm just, I'm drinking, I'm drinking more coffee than I ever had to this baby. But it's a, it's a nice little treat. Now, like, right. see, see. like to the point where like her dad and his girlfriend came over a couple weeks ago and they came in the kitchen like, oh, ninja. <laughs> so when you drink, it's so like when you get a pot, how, you'll just leave that thing on. So the, it's gone, our, right? our schedule now is, yeah, yeah, it's in one of them big metal like pots. It's not an old school pot. It's like in one of them, it's pretty much in like a, oh, a, really? ye- a Yeti pot. Oh, you nice. Know, how sick. much was that? It was a few bucks. You know, but, it was a big treat, big treat for the, uh, the adults for the, having a <laughs> baby. But it was uh, – so I get up super early with the baby. Lena gets up in the middle of the night, but I get super super early. So I brew the p- coffee. I drink what I need. And then, you know, she comes and, like, she has her, like, cup, cup and a half, and we're good to go. But I'm on a whole pot of coffee now. I'm uh, drinking you're, you're more. You're trying to do a pot of coffee a day, guys? I'm on, t- well, I'm on two two big cups of coffee. Uh, I just said to her this morning, I was like, I can't really, like, pot of coffee people. Yeah, there ain't yeah. nothing wrong with that. No, How's the cleanup on that? You know, it's unbelievable because it's right next to the sink. Yeah. So and I got one of them spray things, like a sprayer in my uh, in my sink. It's it's great. It's great. I couldn't be happier with the the the, the, uh, the coffee pot. But, uh, but it was a little expensive. A little expensive, a few bucks. Nothing crazy. I think it was a couple hundred bucks. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, thinking not not, like, it wasn't yeah. like six or seven. No, 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 no. It was like it was like two, two, I, two something. I looked into the one of them ones that like grinds. So did I. It's, like, I. it's like two grand. Yeah, I, I almost went. Wait cra- till that comes yeah. down. I almost went crazy and like, yeah. I was like, well, this one looks nice I, too. I bought an espresso for I got it as a Christmas gift and I fucking loved it. It came with the thing that made the milk frothy. It it, it is great. The only problem with it is it's hard to get. Like you can order on Amazon an espresso capsules and shit, but they're not like. It's convenient. It, is it? She, N- Lainey, Lainey got an espresso capsule. I mean, it frosts nice. It does. And and if you get the one with has like the milk frother thing, like you have to get that part of it. Yeah. It, it's really fucking sick. You're like, this is awesome. It, but that is, there's a little bit of cleanup involved. In yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Th- that sure. that is definitely a, a decent amount of cleanup. But it was one of them things. As soon as I got it, I wanted like everyone to come over and try. It. Yeah, she's off work. She got time to froth. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you gotta like, come over and try this to Addie's mom. I'm like, it's the best ever. Look at this froth. Yeah. Man, yeah. when I worked at Brothel, I was a nice froth guy. I, I used to make cappuccinos. I, I I did well on the froth. You hated the cappuccinos. Hated, hated the cappuccinos, them. but if I had t- like like if I would make them, you know, what I mean, they were good. They were good. I'd fucking froth it up. Uh, I got a gear grinder. I don't know what the fuck is going on with my Twitter algorithm right now. And I seen somebody else tweet about this too, so it's not just me. Like it was like somebody relatively famous it was like a barstool guy or something. I'm going on Twitter, and it's nobody I follow, nothing like that. 
and I'm seeing murders, <laughs> like straight fucking murders. Yeah. Like I've seen three murders in the past like two days, and it's fucking me up. And it's I hard like to look away from it. Too. It, 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 yeah, and like you sometimes you don't even know what's coming. Yeah, like this dude was fucking was in a convenience store today playing a little fucking uh like the lottery with the cherry machine. Dude comes around the corner, blows his brains out. I think I'm watching, like, I don't know what I think. I think th- I don't know what the fuck I'm watching. I didn't think I was watching that. And it's just like, dude, I can't be, like, I can't be taken in. And, like, some of them aren't so bad. But, <laughs> like, like, some I'm, of the murders? Yeah, but, like, other, like, core, there right? was That's one that, like, I can't, like, think of it. I think I mentally blocked it out. There was one that, like, upset me. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I put my phone down. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> So, like, these murders, like, I didn't sign up for murders. I can't be taking this content in every day where, like, start my day off with, like, a brand new murder. <laughs> I think I'm, like, trying to, like, mute and block what I can, but, like, the murders are still getting through, dude, and it is fucking me up. That's so crazy. That, I mean, I guess. It just it, came out of nowhere the one day, like, the breastfeeding shit. Yeah. yeah I mean, dude, that's just crazy. I, I don't know how. Dude, I, same are way. Are you like, seeing murders? I'm dead. Like, a dude, like, went to, like, rob a store, and this dude, like, was sitting at a table and just started capping him. Yeah, dude, it's nuts. And I'm like, and I like watched it a couple times. And I, I watch a did lot I, of. I, I, did I just see that right? Yeah, and then you and now you're fucked because yeah, like you're now there. you're really in the algorithm. So it's just like, dude, I don't know how to like unsign up for the murders. You know, must you got to get the murders off. It's like, and it's not just murders. It's like tragic accidents. Uh, it's, it's not I, good. I, I can't do those. No, it's horrible. It's I'd rather see terrible. the murders. You watch <laughs> a couple murders and they fall them up with the tragic accidents. You're like, dude. What the fuck is going on here? I'm here for like to laugh, you know, and I'm write some shit for a podcast. Jesus Christ! See a butt cheek or something? Yeah, maybe <laughs> a butt cheek. But yeah, Moss, you got to clean the murders up on Twitter, dude. It is fucking yeah, brutal. dude. You don't need to be seeing like dude, like dude like that's shot, not, that's I, I not, seen a full blown shootout. That's not a way to start. I your, watch it though. Yeah, right. It's it's <laughs> not a way to start your day. You know what I mean? And I do like I don't know because I if I watch like a lot of the animal murders, you know what I mean? I like animal stuff, so like. You know, I'll watch a fucking coyote get fucked up by a couple lines. Like, so like, I don't know if like, all right, Twitter's like, all right, this lunatic like likes to watch that. Let's send them like some humans now. You <laughs> know what I Annie. mean? That's up the ante. Like, really get Let's nuts. See how fucking crazy this kid. See how <laughs> nutty he is. Let me see. If we gotta put him some kind of list. Dude, I seen this eagle had this little dog the other day. Oh, I saw it. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. dude, I can't like I can't start my day with that shit. I yeah. can't. It's fucking brutal, man. I just like just like you said a butt cheek. Maybe some football news. Maybe a fantasy football tip. Some, yeah, I don't some fucking good know. Gambling stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the murder's gotta stop, dude. They're fucking shaking me to my core. <laughs> I mean, think about that. Like, uh, uh, opening your day to a murder is an insane way to start yeah. your day. That's why I don't watch the news. They say uh, who was talking about? Rose? Yeah, but the news. The news does have a video of it. Sometimes they do, but like they won't like show it. Yeah, they'll, they'll just like, depress Twitter, you. This shit is raw. They'll, they'll just yeah. depress you. Like, 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 oh, I know what I. I know what the fuck I. I. I had to put my phone down. Three friends were in a car. Dude's driving. Dude's fucking around his uh, with his gun. Blows his fra- his friend's brains out oh, to the point God. where his bra- friend's brains are shooting out on the fucking seat. That's how I started my Sunday. I, I seen that, dude. <laughs> I didn't watch, dude. I right before, like, I'm like, is this about to happen? I like, flipped I, up. dude, I like didn't, and yeah. it's just like I shouldn't have to like be like trying to like dodge murders every morning. <laughs> yeah, it's That's nuts. Fucked up. It's fucked up. It is. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even laugh. It's just crazy. That's a crazy humans. Are I not- didn't think they could even show that. Shit. Remember when we were a kid and like the the you'd see someone's parents would rent. Faces of Death from West Coast yeah. Video. Yeah. And we'd watch it and be like, oh, my God. That like, was definitely at Davis's house. Yeah. 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 And, like, I didn't like it then. No, I didn't. But you, but couldn't, you had to pretend you like couldn't, you did. Yeah, you couldn't say anything. God forbid you don't like watching murders. You're like, yeah, I hope they eat that brains. Yeah. And then meanwhile, I'm like, oh, my God. I got to get out of here. Fucking. I got to yeah. fake a stomach ache. Yeah, turn on Home Alone. We're fucking <laughs> nine. <laughs> and see when they throw away Kevin's ticket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I missed it. We were watching yeah, faces, right. faces of Death. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. All right, baby, we're taking a quick commercial break. Be right back with more Greenfield Finance Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's Ebert from Greenfield Finance Podcast. If you're worried about roofing, windows, siding, soffit, fascia, gutters, spouts, and need help with any of those, call Allen Construction, LLC, 412-954-8337. Whether it's a repair or replacement, they're equipped with the tools and the skills for over 65 years of experience. And remember, Allen Construction, 412 Nine five four eight three three seven, and they're not on heroin. 
Hey, what's going on, everybody? Are you sick of your general contractor having sex with your wife? Well, I was too, and that's when I find out about Schaefer Inc. Schaefer Inc.'s primary goal is to deliver unbeatable quality for all your construction needs. They aim to firstly be a company principle driven, and to achieve this, the importance is ethical business practices. That includes great work and not having sex with your wife. Please check out Schaefer Inc. for all your contracting needs. Give them a call at 412 915 1694. That's 412 915 1694. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I just drove by your house and your wall looks like a giant piece of shit. Well, you know that's no good because anybody can climb up your yard and bang your old lady. That's why you need to call Just Walls 412 889 4401. Fully insured. And when someone pulls up to your house, make sure the first thing they see is your retaining wall. Or the second thing they'll see is your wife's pussy. That's 412-889-4401. Just walls. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I just drove by your house. You got a giant hole in a shot. What's that for? So you can stick your dick in it. Your old lady can shuck it. You're better than that, man. Get that hole patched up. Why don't you call SNL Remodeling LLC? They do roofing, siding, gutters, dime slot, soffit, fascia, and they'll fix that hole so your wife puts shock in everyone's dick. 412-628-9717. And tell them Z-Bird saying you. We're sick of seeing your wife shucking all that cock. Are you sick and tired of bullshit pizza? I knew I was. Thank God there's Capizzuto's Pizza on Greenfield Avenue. They've been in business for over 400 years, making some of Pittsburgh's finest pizza. 412-521-6570. Ask for nubs and tell them Z-Bird sent you if you want the best pizza in the bird. Man, we've been getting some bad storms around here lately. Very bad. Tree actually fell through my roof. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. Luckily, I find Greater Pittsburgh Tree Service at 412-415-7331. They have over 27 years of experience, competitive pricing, and it won't break your budget. Give them a call today for all your tree-related needs. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Greenfield's Finest Podcast. Before we jump into what would Greenfield do, we're going to try to get you kicked off with a new segment for the holiday season that this really grinds my gears. These are fake things that kids never said that their parents will post on social media during Christmas time. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, so you're what you're saying is like, when a parent like says like, oh my Johnny says this that and it's some like outrageous thing it, politically like t- if, t- like t- if bullshit. he was if he was in charge of the world he would just give everybody money and he'd love everybody well, and, and Johnny's a uh, year and a half and and here's so uh, here's some of my favorites that I've seen that I've changed some names on but these were actually real people sayings it goes all. All my Alex ever wanted for Christmas was the new PlayStation 5. When we asked him this year to make his list for Santa Claus, we said, Alex, you didn't put down the PlayStation 5. Don't you want the PlayStation 5? He said, no, Mom. I would much rather send that money over to children that really need it, that they don't have enough food to eat so everyone can have plenty of food. I started crying. Shut the fuck up. You that know, kid never said that. I think Alex seems like a sweet kid. Yeah, you know what? Are you gonna be you gonna be in, you gonna go against me on all these? I'm not gonna <laughs> go against you on all these, but I think there's what do you like, think, like Rosado? What do you think? You think I think kid? it's bullshit? Yeah. yeah. How old is the kid? Th- this one, he's five. Or no, he's not five. The kid was like six. Want, yeah, wants a PlayStation Five. Yeah, he wants a PlayStation Five. The other one is this one. It was. I recently asked my daughter Aubrey, "What what can we get you for Christmas this year?" She really loves the new Barbie movie, and we actually were thinking of building a little small Barbie treehouse out back for her because she deserves it because she's a straight-A student. But when this topic was brought up, she got kind of upset. We said, Aubrey, what could possibly be the matter? She said, Mom, there's so many kids in my class that won't be able to have a good Christmas. I would much rather take any gift that was coming to me this year and split it up with those kids that are less fortunate than me. I don't want anything this year. I just want other kids to have a good Christmas. Total fucking bullshit. It seems like this generation is really giving. Yeah. I want to see the kid. uh, Show me. Don't. Instead of the parents posting the fucking. You want to see a video? The fake. I want to see the video. Well, you start doing that, and they will do it, but they'll secretly give the kids gifts. see how good of an actor they are. Yeah, I want to see how good of an actor you are. You know, kids like shaking, like, ooh. I just want to Reading give off the teleprompter. Yeah. Kids, kids don't want to give their gifts away. No, no, no fucking way. Just, I, just ask Meryl Hodge about that. <laughs> what Meryl do? 
Remember when Merrill told us about when they gave up his Christmas at the DV Christmas party? Oh, uh, yeah. Merrill bombed at the DV Christmas party <laughs> fucking last year. I forgot about that. That was rough. It was, I mean, dude, it was a dying moment at the DV Christmas party, but he had given away, given up his Christmas to a family that uh, they thought they deserved to have it, but apparently their dad liked to drink beers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he really brought the mood down at the old DV Christmas party. So he gave, actually did this. He no, had, no, Merle said his, his dad. His family did. His yeah, family gave away their Christmas. Gave away their Christmas gifts to a to a family in need, and Merle was like, yeah, and like that's where I learned to give or some bullshit like that. <laughs> he like spun it, and I'm like, dude, no one's buying this shit, Merle. But realistically, the family's Yeah, dad, Merle did exactly. The, exact, dad's, the dad's was the Yeah, drunk. Merle did exactly what Z-Bird's trying to do now, like he, the example of that. Where but, Merle but, was like, at a young age, I knew like giving was the key. He was 15 or 16, but they said when they got to the house, I mean, this was supposed to, this was on the radio. I don't know if we got caught or not, but, like, he told the story to everybody. So it's not like we're, this is, like, breaking news. But some, he's told a story a million times. But when he got there, like, the said they got there, they bring the tree in, the meal, and the gifts. And the dad pulls up in a station wagon with a case of beer. And Merle was like, how could you have enough money for a case of beer but not for gifts? And Randy Bauman was like, well, case of beer back then was like three bucks. Right. <laughs> the holidays. You could get a bunch of, you know, you could still get a bunch of beer for like nine dollars. The holidays. Yeah, yeah right. And, and Your like, kids have nothing. Of course you're gonna get drunk. <laughs> yeah, you just con, you just conned them to giving all their shit away. <laughs> yeah, like dude. And then it went to two cases. And I'll tell you just, what, I didn't like Merle too much. You didn't? No, I didn't like the way the vibes Merle was giving off. Remember, he, I wanted to get a picture with him until that happened, and I was like, you "Yeah, know, uh, you're like, I'm not saying that. Fuck this guy." Sean Casey, the mayor, is the man. He was awesome, but yeah, Merle, Merle wasn't cool. Now I'm, I've, I've been remembering this. <laughs> Maybe that's why we're not invited back. <laughs> Merle didn't like us. That was the problem. Yep, I don't like Merle. Put that out there. <laughs> Wait, yeah, maybe we'll just go on TV tomorrow. I'm like, what's up with this fucking Hodge? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Hodge at? They're like, all right, guys, thanks for coming on. Yep, never Coin talk that, to you ever again. Never talk to you guys again. I want to start taking shots at like people, like Pittsburgh people on DV, but like, that's I don't. That's wanna, the stupidest I don't, thing I've ever. Heard. I know <laughs> it is, but I like want to. Who? Uh, I mean, I want to go at Marty. I want to go at Colin Dunlap because Colin Dunlap's trying to steal Marty's job. Colin Dunlap is like literally tweeting. Uh, I seen him going after Beth Howell. Yeah, dude, it's like brutal. Like he he was unbearable for like for sports. Colin Dunlap on fucking politics is uh way worse, dude. That's a not that I get. Oh, well, you go after people like him. He's not even affiliated really with DV. Yeah, I guess Merle does like he, he Merle's on TV every week. Yeah, yeah you can't like, crash Merle. Yeah, I'd be like me going on and fucking like Billy Gardell. I yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I like Billy Gardell. He's a good guy. I don't know. Merle was just he didn't seem too jolly. He didn't seem too warm. He did you know, he was like he was there to do a job. Uh yeah, if I, and one thing we like, people are always like, Oh, you guys never have no guest on. I'll tell you this much. This upcoming year, if if someone has a connection with a guest, the one person who we'd love to have on this show. 100% would be Bob Pompey. Pomp said he would come on. I never so, replied to him. So I think th- if anyone knows P- Pomp or anything like that or could like leak a message, because I know we have some higher ups that listen to this, leak a message to Pomp. I might reach out to him soon, say, Pomp, we've been doing this for four years. Maybe you could come on and, and hang with us. I think Pomp would come on. It's just like, we what, wouldn't what Pomp in, are we going to get? But we, I'll t- I'd be, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I respect Pomp enough. We wouldn't put him in a fucked up spot. Like, no, we wouldn't put him in a fucked up spot, but I, w- I want him to like put his, let his guard down a little bit, too. Right. I uh, don't want to get him to get in here and talk about, like, the Penguins. Yeah, I, but I wouldn't say shit like, hey, Pomp, would you, if for a million dollars, would you titty fuck Eagle Tits? No, no way. <laughs> Off air, I'd like to hear that answer. <laughs> yeah. He definitely would. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yes. yeah 100%. 62 grand. Yeah. I, I don't know if Pomp would have a problem. Paul might lean into us a little bit. I don't know. He seems like a total cut up. Yeah, he's a funny dude. Rich Walsh too. I'd have either one of them on. You like Richie Walsh, huh? I do. Nice Let's hair. Say, yeah. Does good hair. And he, no, Richie Walsh has been hanging on for a long time. It's him and Paul are like this. Those are they're boys. I uh, yeah. If you get one, you get the other. So that's we'll what I'm take saying. Little Richie Walsh and Paul. Yeah. We, uh but yeah, guest. Uh, so much more work. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do what we green will do. All right, everybody, we're about to jump into what would grief will do. What would grief will do. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> uh, would you rather have the ability to see 10 minutes in the future or 150 years in the future? 10 minutes in the future. 10 minutes. What the fuck's 150 years going to do for you? I'll be dead. Well, that's not true. Guys, let me hear your answer. If you're like 150 years in the future and you see like an invention like 
you could see inventions. So you could steal the inventions. Now, that's a great idea. See, what I was thinking of along well, like short-minded was betting. If I could see who scored the first touchdown in the game and then bet on that. Yeah, but you could also – so 10 minutes. So, yeah, unlimited. You could also see, like, who wins the Super Bowl every year, who wins the Stanley Cup every year for, like uh, – so You could almost get, like, an encyclopedia for yeah, 150 yeah. years. Then you got to take that. No, no, no. You're you, what they're saying is, would you rather have the ability to see ten minutes in the future or 150 years? So you wouldn't be able to see the next 150 years. You would be able to see 150 years from now. Oh, uh, I get you. So you're just looking at 150 years. So, but your I invention guess you could, thing could work. The invention could work, but then you would have to be able to put that in play. Right. Yeah. And, ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, but like, no. That's I actually kind of liked your. You kind of swayed me a little bit because it's like, w- what's the next Amazon? What's the next? right. That being said, it, so there, ideas are great, but like you got to be able to fucking execute them too. It'd be a lot of ex- easier to execute that parlay, right? Yeah, you just be <laughs> parlaying yourself like that's what you do. Yeah, but you'd dude, be, Pete, he, you'd have to fucking pop around the casinos. You have to hire a bunch of people. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like hey, they like they won't let Z Bird bet no more. Yeah, fucking Deshaun Watson's about to throw a pick. Yeah, or like dudes always you could bet now. I seen a dude he bet was like a four dollar bet. On NBA, picked every game who to score the first basket and hit them all. It won like it was, dude. It was crazy. It was like sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I did see that. But yeah, it was like end on a free throw or some shit. Yeah. Like sixteen bathrooms gonna be a, the sixteenth. The sixteenth point is gonna be a free throw or some shit like that. It was not. It was in some insane odds. Uh, would you rather have telekinesis, the ability to move things with your mind, or telepathia, the ability to read minds? I read minds. Yeah, I don't know what what good telekinesis is going to do for you like if I, I mean if i was like telekinesis i'm a landscaper i'm like i could just run the mower back and forth all day with my brain and then i'm like i gotta carry this mower down the steps no i don't put it in the back of the truck so you're just saying to, to strictly get out of labor yeah well what and oh i mean dude i could do a lot of stuff with my oh go down stairs and move this basket around throw these clothes in the laundry yeah <laughs> you could just play madden all day yeah and I just while I'm getting, I'm multitasking. Yeah, work. Yeah, at work, but like. But if you could read people's minds, that'd be good for the in the you, business you sense. Could steal some ideas. Oh yeah, yeah I'd like to see what's down coming. With a wee little moss in. Yeah. See what he got cooking up. It would, it would help with the coos too. You wouldn't have to waste any time when you walked with some broad <laughs> and she said, "Ooh, gross." You know, like, okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Understood. Or she walked out like, "Ooh," and then you're like, "Okay," you know. <laughs> that would that would save you some time. That's the only kind of uh, stealing <laughs> a business ideas and Coos. tail. <laughs> yeah, a little I bit don't... of shark fin pie on the brain. Man, dude, every time you say shark fin pie, I just think of that dessert. Cormac and Schmitz. Oh, it's so good. Well, McCormick and Schmitz go out shark fin pie. Yeah, we've been through this before, yeah. but it's, right. it's unbelievable. All right. Yeah, it was your exact response the last time. What? what? <laughs> McCormick and Schmitz got a shark fin pie? I'm not a big seafood guy, so I ain't never, I don't yeah, really Yeah, you should go down there for the shark fin. It's, it's fucking, huge. It's huge. What it's is like, it? So it's dude, like it's, ice it's cream, a peanut butter, with a little bit of cake, cake. inside. Yeah, peanut it's, butter ice cream cake, and they call it shark fin pie. It's shaped like a shark yeah. fin. It's a big ass piece. It's so weird. They call pussy shark fin pie, and they named the dessert after it. Yeah, is that something you made up? I, I don't know if I ever heard up. anybody else I say that. that. I think that's yeah, right. I don't think it's they. I think it's a you thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never. We're gonna have some caller like me and my boys been saying shark fin pie forever. And eh, no, you haven't. <laughs> they seen. They read my mind. They got telekinesis. Uh, would you rather have aliens be real and covered up by the government, or ha- no, ha- or have no extraterrestrial life in the universe? I would rather have them be covered up. By- I like the thought they of are having covered it- up. They're here. Yeah, yeah I mean, we yes. already got them. I, I definitely. I mean, b- on that question, they're not doing us any favors. We don't know that. I I think if you want my honest opinion, which I'm going to give it to you, I think the aliens have prevented a lot of nuclear war from happening in this country, in this world. You think so? Dude, if you, I've watched enough History Channel to see that the most action, like where alien sightings and stuff like that are over, nuclear t- test sites and nuclear sites, where they said, like, things... You think be, they're just shutting it down? Yeah, 100%. I think they prevented us from blowing up our own planet. That or already. we just have, like, like governments have superior technology that they don't let us know yet. Yeah. yeah. And we think it's aliens. That could be true, too. I think that's... But yeah, I think we both. got that technology I think it's probably both aliens. at this... Yeah, probably. We are, I think we're aliens. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Probably. Look at Eagle Tick. Socks. Yeah. What yeah. sucks about being an alien? We're all right. We got a podcast. Yeah, we got a podcast. <laughs> That's true. All right, last one. Would you rather have one-minute conversation with your past self or future self? 
I mean, I, I would say the past self said it would change the future, but I'd be like, don't smoke crack. Whatever you do. I'd say take one more, one more in a minute. Yeah. Like, yeah. listen, dude. You probably have to cover a lot of things. Like maybe yeah. like, don't start drinking at 12. Yeah. 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 Stay, don't, don't, you know, you don't, you're going to need more than an eighth grade education. Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know. You, uh, future self. I don't. What would you tell your future self? We're fucked. Yeah, like I, yeah. I, I, I would. I mean, your, your future <laughs> yeah. self would more or less be telling you. Yeah, like, be telling you, like, okay, we we got a house. That's good. Still got a house. Yeah. Okay. What about what kind? Of, well, we, what if you go to your future self and you're, you're sucking dick behind a dumpster? <laughs> yeah, and you're like, man, you really turned out bad. He's like, I know. I wish you went talk back to yourself ten years. <laughs> the old yeah, prior you fucked self. this up. Uh, we wouldn't have been sucking dick behind that. I'm like, that's you. And I'm like, fuck. Fucking Fanoi, <laughs> get me back out of here. <laughs> All right, that's enough podcast. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. Everybody, if you could do us a big favor, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment. If you could, please share the podcast. Like I know when you're listening to it, if you could just share it onto your social media page, say check out Greenfield's Finest Podcast. When you say that, say check out at Greenfield's Finest Podcast. That way we know that you put it on there. Also, the comedy show coming up. This Saturday, December 16th at Stage AE, I'm going to be on it. Matt Light, Bill Crawford, Race and Wadi, huge show. All, the, all, the first time ever, it's going to be all Pittsburgh comedians on a platform that big. At, um, and don't forget about our Patreon. Thank you to everyone who does already is sign up for Patreon. If you do have the $5, you can afford it. We could really use the help right now as we're going through some things with some sponsors. Everyone, have a great week. And remember, folks, Greenfield loves you. We're out.